Here we go, Groundhog Day. It's the 23rd of August. <coughs> we are playing Star Trek Online as usual per the time at night. We are playing all the time. Up night, we are playing. <laughs> <coughs> Come on into the wall. There we go. Dirty nappers. Why are we flipping around? Oh, while well, there's no chat at the moment, I can read the endeavors. Complete Iconian TFO. Stream one. Elements Never says mind. Scorpwana is now <coughs> huh. Streaming Star Trek Online. Star Trek Online. Everything everywhere all at once. August 23rd, 2022. <sighs> Disruptor damage the ground. <coughs> Defeat Zen Kathy ground. <coughs> That's that can't be possible. That cannot be. Po I just did that one yesterday. Sixty Zen Kathy. I went to that damn mission. The fuck. <laughs> Let's do it again. Let's do it again. <laughs> Oh, don't you know? We can't go on together. <coughs> What's all suspicious means? Paid for by the following. there to work today had to check in um, coke vendor well, he's delivering and, um, this guy comes in and wanders around or whatever he's got the meth face you know and flailing his arms around a little bit and he goes over to the register and um, he says I'm ready, customer. I'm a customer. Customer always. Come on, customer first. I'm like, okay, I'll be there in just a second. Hold on. Yeah. I go over there and he's like, man, I, man, if I if I ran this place, if I ran this place, if I if I ran this place, I, I'd I'd. And then he stopped. And then he was like, 
starts talking about um, he's a God fearing man. He God fearing. He's God fearing. And you know what I'm saying? You know how hard how hard it is for everybody. Is how hard for me to live, man? You know I got I got I do what I gotta do. You know I'm a God fearing man. And he just starts on and on about this just rambling, this obsession of random things. And then he just kind of exits out and. <clears throat> About a few moments later, the local police guy uh, of the town, you know, shows up. Asked if we had any kind of interesting visitor. Like, yeah, <laughs> that guy. And he said, yes. He's already been called on him about like three times already. And uh, I said, well, did you talk to him? And he's like, yeah. He, he said he's he's down there about. On the other end of the town, you know, because this was like, you know, maybe 30, 40 minutes later. <clears throat> Didn't give him any idea of anything. His arms all going everywhere. You know, methed up. And the Coke vendor's uh, other dude that drove the co a Coke van, which I'd never seen one of those before, came in and... Um, was helping the coke uh, delivery guy out you know this vendor guy he, he like does the order and whatever um, okay <clears throat> and um, as uh, the other employees get there that are gonna work with me the night of the other employee and they go outside to smoke. They sit there in the chairs and stuff. And I'd walk toward the door to just kind of be part of the conversation in a way, you know, just to just be out there, take a little break myself, and just stand there, you know. <clears throat> and by the time I get out there and I look to my like right side, <clears throat> I see um, this white truck peeling his. Uh, bumper off of the uh, coca-cola van and by appealing I mean like uh, he's like pulling his truck away as it scrapes off the back of this thing and he just pulls up a little bit stops and I'm like oh shit and uh, all the other employees are standing there going you know like yeah that just happened you know so I walk in there and I said uh, uh, whichever of you is driving the uh, the Coca-Cola van, someone just hit the back of your van with their truck. And the guy was like, just shrugged, looked up and said, this has been one shitty day I'm having. <laughs> I was like, damn. <clears throat> the guy like, back to just straight on into the back of that thing and and luckily the back door can still open it's just amazing it's bent and everything so they had to wait for like the town cop to come over and do the police report thing you know to file for insurance and all that and <sighs> it's just something else No, I want the B one. Where are you, you little bastard? I know you're there. Ooh. <coughs> so a lot of people hitting a lot of people in our parking lot lately. <coughs> amazing I mean you know someone backs into my little car but she doesn't do any damage it's just a little little maybe a little scratch of on the plastic that's just plastic who gives a shit and then the manager backs into one of the the employees truck employee truck saved by the bumper because they're like got them big truck you know and now somebody backs into the dude's van I mean shit 
There was uh, I wasn't like part of the whole conversation and everything they were talking about, but one part of it was the guy was trying to get out of the way in a hurry because someone else was going really fast. But there was nobody else in the parking lot except, like, vehicle-wise, maybe two employee vehicles, myself, the Coca-Cola guy, and then, of course, the Coke truck that's parked to the side of the building completely out of the way, and this guy in a white truck. There was nobody else, like, coming or going out of the parking lot. So. I don't know. <laughs> Just a confusing day. <clears throat> I watched a movie uh, last night after getting off the stream and I wanted to just watch maybe a television show but there was nothing on that I could see worth watching or anything so so I just watched a movie I looked it up uh, it's called like uh, everything everywhere all at once it's got um, <clears throat> What's her name from uh, place Giorgio or whatever from Discovery? Where she's this uh, mother and wife of uh, the the guy that played uh, in the Goonies, the uh, the little aging dude. I can't think of his name. Um, Mal? No, not Mal. No, I can't think. Booby Traps, you know, the booby trap kid. He's all grown up now and he's in that movie. But um <clears throat> he plays like uh the husband slash father person. Then uh, the Giorgio lady or whatever. She has uh, like an elderly father and then an, uh, a teenage slash young adult um kid that's uh brought her girlfriend or whatever to let the grandfather know that they're lesbians or something like that and uh, <clears throat> while they're there they're like you know doing their own little thing because they're running like this laundry mat and they're behind on their IRS taxes and stuff so they have to go to the assessor's office to get everything going and straighten it out whatever and when she's there all of a sudden in the elevator her husband becomes another person but he's the same person like the same physical person physical body person but it's, it's like mentally he's an alternate reality version of himself that's traveled to warn her about something and uh, he tells her to do certain things in order to talk to him again and which is like put your shoes on backwards and and some other shit or whatever to do and press buttons on the uh, headset thing or these little earbuds he Congratulations, gave Admiral. So she does this and she talks to him and she learns about this evil that's out there in the not really a multiverse it doesn't say that word but it's the multiverse and uh, he thinks that she's Murdoch the one says, that can save him. I put my sausage in her mouth, then grabbed her by the pussy. Oh, whoops, wrong chat. <laughs> hey, Murdochs. Um, so then, uh, like, it kind of glimpses to this guy's reality. He's from the Alpha universe. <clears throat> and they're trying to stop this evil version that splintered from one person's mind and created all these alternate type things that people believe in or something or whatever. This evil one person that can go into everybody all are, are the same. It's confusing. But um, anyway, it's like he tells her if she wants to like learn something from one of her other alternate universe selves to do this specific type of weird thing and then press the button and she can travel along the multiverse into one of her other lives kinda of download their ability to do something and then bring it back and do it in her world and um, she learns like kung fu in half a second and 
There's a sausage universe or weenie universe where everyone's hands or the fingers are weenies, hot dog weenies, instead of actual fingers. And Murdoch says, who you talking to, Willis? I'm just, I talk out just to anyone that's out there listening. You know, you, you just talk when there's, when you're just start streaming and just to get a conversation going. Paul, I'm talking about the uh, movie Everything, Everywhere, All at Once that I, just, I watched last says, night. But can't you see nobody is here but me? Exactly, but what about people who are watching it in the future? I'm talking to, to everyone, past, present, and future. Murdoch says, ha ha WTF. Yeah, you, you, you got to do that. <clears throat> you never know who's going to be watching eventually. Somebody that comes along and they watch this. You're talking to them, so I'm talking to whoever else is listening that I'm that has never actually sat and watched this, or may not ever, for a long time or whatever. Um, I've been just talking about that movie though. Um, she finds out this this other evil is a version of her own daughter that was testing this multiverse thing, and her mind split, so she was able to control and willingly jump into any version of her. Or her body in different realities and stuff. And it's really weird. There's there's dildos in it. Um, like, one of the weird things is that these other people can do is if they want to learn, like, a kung, kung fu, they have to shove something up their ass. And during... Murdoch says, you like them dildos, don't <laughs> Uh... Murdoch says, okay, what film is this? Everything, everywhere, all at once. And there's there's some scenes where they've blurred out this guy's privates, but he's got this, like, egg thing shoved up his ass so he can, u he can use Kung Fu from this alternate universe. It's, it's insane. But, uh, you know, it's, it's interesting. I mean, there's two rocks that are sitting there talking to each other. They're... It's got the... The actress that played Giorgio in Star Trek Discovery. Everything, everywhere, all at once. I posted a trailer to it, or the link to the trailer in my Discord uh, watch list. <coughs> so, there's that. Ooh, good look at that. Claim tier 5 of that one. Murdoch says, yeah, couldn't they get a cool guy to play that part, Sai? And she does a good job. I mean, she actually does, you know, kung fu, and and she's been in fighting movies in Asia. You know, we only know her as like Giorgio from Discovery, but I have seen her in other things before, before Discovery, when she was younger and stuff like that. I mean, she's not too old or anything. She's just, you know. But it's it's got the the, the dude that played the. Murdoch says. Should have been a Brad Pitt movie, lol. <laughs> a Brad Pitt movie. But it's it's kind of a... It's goofy, but interesting. It's like the, the daughter person who's figured out how to jump into any random one of her bodies in the multiverse can be... Can, can like, sense in one universe that she's holding, like, some flowers or something like that. And they can bring those flowers into existence into like the re the the world that she goes to with whenever she feels like it. She can transmutate says, things. Unclejo P L Unclejo E A Unclejo S C. She can uh, transmute things, which is like uh, change change people physically, make their head explode into glitter and all that kind of stuff. It's really weird. It's got um. <sighs> Damn it! What's her name? Shit. Uh, Halloween lady in it. The fuck. I'm gonna have to look that up because it's it's bothers me. I can't remember shit sometimes. <clears throat> Jamie Lee Curtis. Yeah. James Hong. Yeah, it's really weird. And what was interesting too, like uh, since the person that plays the father figure is the 
dude that played on the Goonies, you know, the Asian dude from the Goonies, he has this little pouch and it's got all these weird trick things inside of it. So it's, it's like, that's what he's done with his whole life, and you know. Um, oh, competitive marks. I only need a little bit more. Diamond. But it was different to watch that. The mother, like, learns how to jump to multiple realities and get uh, abilities. There's this one reality that she jumps to that uh, they they do thing, uh, pinky kung fu, and that's it. So it's like a, a close-up of her pinky. She flexes it, and this little tiny muscle pops up like it'd be on an arm. So it's Murdoch kind of says, kind of a goofy thing. So I put Murdoch into the red angel suit but using way different colors. Doesn't look right. It looks like a female suit being worn by a male. I need to find a different kind of suit. Yeah, that's the thing. I think the red angel suit was made for female characters anyway. <coughs> do 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 do. Do 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 do. do. Unless they like have the breastplate for a female on the suit for a guy, that's that'd be kind of awkward. Who are you? I am Steve. <laughs> uh, Michael. Added two more video clips to um to the thing here. I can't remember how to spell one of them though. But nice day today. I think I might turn. Uh... Is that Alan? Alan! Al! Alan! Uh, yeah, I don't think you need me, you know. Yeah. Alan! 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 Al! Alan! 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 Romeo oh, and Diazulu says, well, Steve, seeing as how in the show it was only worn Steve, by two women, Steve, it Steve, seems Steve, like it would Steve, be a woman's Steve, suit. Steve! Id. I still use it in my men sometimes as I level. Oh, no, that's not Steve. That is Alan. Alan! Alan! Al! Alan! 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 Did someone just say my name? Hey! 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 hey. You say Alan! Why isn't it showing my background for Star Trek Online? Is it showing it? But it's not. Murdoch says it's broke. That doesn't make any damn sense. Properties. Star Trek Online. So stupid. This thing is just a piece of shit. Uh. Romeo and Diazulu says it flashed for a second, then disappeared again. Yeah, I'm. I'm uh, it's kind of hard to get this thing. I don't. It doesn't make any sense that it. I mean, has it been blank the whole damn time that I've been? Because I can put it on game capture. Fucking thing sucks! Right? I can put it on game capture, and it automatically finds something to sort of do that. But I don't like that. I like to designate it to, like, the actual, um, the actual program that it's using. Let's see. Where is scene? No, no. Game capture? No. Window capture? Yes. Window capture. Add source. Uh, add source. And Star Trek Online. Done. Start to go line. Minimize. Nope. What's the deal with that? Uh, minimize. So I can see what the hell I'm doing. This doesn't make any sense. So okay, if I'm if I have this active, I click off of it. What ch the the game updated or some shit? Now I guess it doesn't capture fucking right. It's about to Bullshit. Okay, so I'll turn on game capture mode. So at least it'll like probably do something. Or not. Does it have to be full screen to do that? 
I don't know. Okay, uh, get that off of there. Okay, remove that. Remove that. And remove that. Okay. <laughs> that doesn't make any sense. I click off of that. <laughs> it doesn't make any damn sense. Okay, well, I guess I'll have to keep it with that. That sucks ass. Well, that means the whole run through of Lilu didn't even show up then, but in the beginning of the end, there wasn't nothing really there to watch. Ooh, they made in a drone out of one of the generals, and he disappeared, of course, because, you know, that's what they do. <clears throat> ah, damn it. I know, I turned on Star Trek Online, and it didn't show that it updated anything. But then whenever I went to launch it, my firewall says a new program or something like that. I'm like, okay, whatever. It usually does that. I use Zone Alarm Pro just because I want to have complete control over the firewall and not uh, not just allow every damn thing to run through there without knowing what the hell's going on. So it nags me about le every little detail, <clears throat> which is what I want it to do. I don't like uh, Windows Basic firewall shit sucks ass because <clears throat> it doesn't like say, oh hey. This this wants to do this. This wants to do that. My, well, at least mine never does. I don't know. All three, All three silos. That's about right. Excellent work. The Bob Fortress has engaged transporters. Troops inbound. Troops inbound, Captain. So I'm gonna have to mess around with that. With suspicious minds. Suspicious minds. Riz, how are you doing, dude? How goes it, buddy? Okay, what do we need to do? Which way? We need to go that way. Okay. Run down over here. But yeah, there's that there's that weird moment on that movie <clears throat> where the Giorgio character, who I cannot remember what the hell her name is in the movie. I can't remember what the fuck her name is in real life either, for some damn reason. Um, of course, you gotta know it first, right? <laughs> She's like fighting against this random guy. Romeo India Zulu says, Shitty day. I'm about to play some Origins, so I shall depart. Apologies for not staying longer, but I need to game. I understand. Well, you go ahead and go game. Have some fun. Um, yeah. No probs, yo. Mert Docs says, what is Origins? Like Romeo and Zulu says, Assassin's Creed. But that's not to say Thaw's place isn't fun. I just need to bash some heads. Bash heads and take names. Take, take heads and claim names. I mean, it's, it's kind of true. This Well, not, not that it says fun, but it's 
this place isn't fun. I mean, this is just playing Star Trek. I mean, that's that's not fun. And that's that's not entertainment fun. I mean, what I'm doing is not entertainment. That's for damn sure. But <coughs> but I understand. Like sometimes it's fun to play things and run around and do stuff versus just watching. Cause I I know like uh, I felt like that a lot of times. <coughs> We can go on together with suspicious minds, and we can build our dreams. Murdoch says, Scorpwana says, sometimes it's fun to play things, then pulls out his sausage during the stream. Then eats a sausage, what? <coughs> well... <coughs> Sometimes it's just more fun, you know, to actually play a game. You know, kind of relax instead of doing the same thing over and over and over all the time. It's just fun to relax and play. Or, you know, instead of like, like again, you, you know, if you watch somebody playing something and then you like sit there for a few hours watching, like, well, I've, I've killed a few hours just watching this person play. I have not accomplished anything myself. Or... I want to do something myself, you know. So that's not, it's not a, a thing. I mean, it's not bad. It's, it's, it's good to get out there, you know, do something, you know. That's why I kind of, I, I get it, you know. What the hell? Mm. With suspicious minds. Need a Tetrion weapon. Someone who shoots Tetrion takes the shields down. That would be the best thing. Fighting a Rex, just with weapons only. I mean, does do people actually do that, you know, like when they play this game anymore? Just use weapons only. Instead of all the tricks and shit and modules and training manual bullshit. He's in a spot where I cannot shoot. Okay, there we go. Boom. Use that to reverse it onto himself. <laughs> Time to get the big guns out that I've been told is one of the best guns to use against the Rex that doesn't seem to do a damn thing against the Rex. Yeah. Just a perfect day. Drink sangria in the park. And then later, when it gets dark, we go home. Just a perfect day. Feed animals and the zoo. 
Then later, a movie too, and then horror. Oh, it's such a perfect day. I'm glad I spent it with you. Oh, just a perfect day. You just keep me hanging on. You just keep me hanging on. Shut up, Wesley. Ouch. Carl, get back here, Carol. Step into the light, Carl Ann. Uh, yeah. It's Tuesday evening. Tuesday night. Did anything come on television worth watching? Any kind of shows new? Or... Ooh, that's gonna be dead in a second. I'm not gonna bother to get that one. All three silos are under Allied control. Excellent work. Fortresses engage transporters. Troops inbound. Alright, damn it. I gotta get Michael Cohen doing some shit around right here. <coughs> do 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 Shoulders aching, knees weak, arms heavy. That kind of thing. Vomit sweater already. Mom spaghetti. Who knows? Question mark. <sighs> you know, I'd have to say, since starting the streaming thing, um, you know, last year. I've learned a hell of a lot with it when it comes to this game. A lot more than what I knew before last year. And I think everybody that, that has showed me things it made me more aware of how to play, what to play, even though I don't seem to, to do that. Murdoch says, and the crazy thing is you still don't know much, haha, -ha, just joking. That's right. I don't. I don't know. I don't retain it. You know, I hear the suggestions, I do the suggestions, but then I forget because I don't use it enough to remember. But I'm more aware of, like, damage type stuff, you know. Little combinations of things and whatnot. I've come a lot longer way with the game. And that's what I wanted to accomplish with like uh, streaming and stuff. That's kind of like Jack Patillo streaming Minecraft. When he was playing Minecraft for Rooster Teeth to Let's Play and all that, you know. He only knows so much about the game, so he wanted to know more. So he decided to stream the game and get input from people to, to help him be better at the game. Enemy That's kind of like the idea that I had Murdoch with says, it's a progress. You're on your way. <sighs> Eventually you will be the Supreme Stone Nerd. No. I doubt that completely. <clears throat> I don't remember the this, this shit about, what, you know, here and there and everywhere. I mean, at one time I probably would, could have, but not anymore. It's just, there's just like so much to do. 
in this game to do certain things. And all of it's mostly repetitive, you know. Like, you know, if you have a character and you want this character to do this or that and have this and that and whatever, you got to build them up, you know. Once you build them up, then you're like, eh, I don't really want to do anything with this character anymore because it took too damn long. But I understand that's like when people do the whole money thing, you know. They spend the money on it to quickly advance it. There's a hell of a lot more I could do with each of my characters. But I don't. I haven't. You know, you get like people help you build a, a a type of set that you're using for one of the ships and you use that forever and ever and ever and then they come back and they're like, What are you using for your ship set? And I said, It's like you know, the same thing you showed me to use. Well, show me what it is. And they're like, well, I don't know why I told you to do that. You're like, well, well I don't know either. You know, because you're the one helping me. But, <clears throat> you know, things change and the game changes. And I don't keep up with that kind of stuff in the game. You know, whenever they say, oh, they're going to lower this. They're going to raise that. They're going to bring out this brand new something. And I'm like, mm, whatever. It affects playing it. Of course, I'm not one of those strategy game people either, you know. I'm not one of those going to play district, better not district, shit, Dungeons and Dragons. I wouldn't know the first damn step about Dungeons and Dragons. What if I'm an idiot and I want to visually see the shit instead of actually having to imagine it? What about that? <clears throat> Or people that will play their actual Pokemon card game. I don't even know how the hell they play a Pokemon game. I know people like use the app and stand out in the middle of the road and get ran over, but other than that, you know, the cards do some shit. <clears throat> Somebody will get a card and they'll do a thing with it and then they'll have another card that does this with it. And, uh, uh -huh. What? What the hell is that? Am I going to learn it? No. Is it, le is it fun for me? It's not. But it's fun for other people. Okay, I respect that. It's just not, not for me. And they're like, well, you can learn it. Well, it's too far. It's too far past the time to learn shit. I think once you reach a certain age, <laughs> you just stop learning. That's just it. Or you relearn what you already learned. That kind of thing. Like something that you have already knew out there. You know, you've, you've learned it when you were younger. You've retained it. Then all of a sudden you've turned like 40 years old. You can't remember it anymore. And then someone younger than you tells you, hey, this, this, did you know that? And you're like, wow, I didn't, but I think I did and I didn't at the same time. <clears throat> the brain is a piece of shit. The brain is a piece of shit. It's like... Murdoch when I see, says, uh, yeah, fuck you, brain. You know that bastard. You know, I see like people coming in with their kids and their kids are wearing like um everyone always says the word karate but it doesn't mean the, that they're actually in a Japanese martial arts class cuz karate or karate karate what do you want to call it? Um Japanese. You know, that's it's like samurai type shit, you know. Um Versus your Taekwondo, which is from Korea. Korean karate, in a way. Um, but it's not just called karate. I don't know why people do that. It ticks the fuck out of me off for some reason. I guess it's because I used to take Taekwondo. And I knew how to differentiate which one was, you know, which and stuff. There was this... Uh, guy that was in our Taekwondo class, he had taken Shotokan Karate. Or Shokan, or whatever you want to call it. Like at an earlier time, and... That stuff was just... You know... And you get people like, uh, talking about... You know, they come up to you and say, You gonna do some Kung Fu on me? And that Kung Fu's completely different too! It's, a, it's China, you know. It's, everything is different. Independent of its own actual area. But they would always just get it together. So, 
whenever I was taking uh, Murdoch says ain't that something when I was taking Taekwondo when I was like what 14 that's when I, guess when I start 14 16 something like that um you know you you become like I was taught under someone that was USTF which is United States Taekwondo Federation the first Taekwondo or whatever that was established in the United States by the actual, you know, Korean or whatever people or some shit. Yeah. General, what's his name? Or some, I don't know. <coughs> Not anymore. I don't know anymore. I probably did. <laughs> Who knows? Um, it's the thing about when you live a long time, I guess you just kind of forget the little details of shit. You forget who you are, you know, when you live a long time, I guess. Nothing around to remind you of who you are. Um, but, Chun Ji, I think it was Chun, so Chung, General Chung then, if it's Chun Ji, Chun Ji Dan Gong Go Song Wan Ho Yoko Toi Kai Ho Ran, Ho An, Ho An. But, um, when I was taking all that... Murdoch says, General Chunky. General Chunky? General Chunky Butt? But it was, uh, the, the official Taekwondo. It's like ITA Taekwondo. Which is like the inter uh, International Taekwondo... Or ta it's Taekwondo International or something, but this is national. <coughs> but... That was back then, you know. It was in like a well-established one. You were registered. I don't know if I ever was. Probably not. <laughs> Probably not at all. So I'm not officially anything. Just a piece of shit. I knew I'd live up to nothing. But you know, I I made it up to to black belt. In in class black belt, out class uh, recommended Murdoch like says, something. You're officially a loser, like me. Exactly. The losers. Rated R. They thought they were something until, you know, until they learned that they were nobodies. But, you know, I, I made it all the way up through there. Learning the Murdoch moves. Says, learning the. You made it to Black Belt? That's good. Yes, but that's, that's nothing. Making it to Black Belt is nothing compared to the degrees of the Black Belt. When you make it to Black Belt, you're actually ready to start real training <coughs> and I st had started real training until the class shut down and he, the instructor had to go and you know have a life out there <coughs> so the second taekwondo class was starting up in the area and um, one Gaming of the with Zydburn says Hello, how's everyone doing? Doing? How are you doing, dude? Gaming with Sideburns is brought to you by... So, uh, after our class or whatever, or... I don't know what you fucking call that. It's, it wasn't a dojo, because that's, that's not Taekwondo. Taekwondo doesn't have dojos. That I'm aware of. We didn't have one. We just had, like, a school. Just a little a workout area kind of shit. You know? After that was over, um, and a guy from the class and myself decided, hey, you know, well, he said there's another school thing, you know, in town. Murdoch we'll try says, it out. the Loser Institute? Probably. Could be, yeah. But, um, Gaming with Zydberg so says, we, uh, been trying to figure out a good science ship for my Romulan character. I have no idea about science ships. <laughs> I suck at all this stuff in the game. I play it though. You know? We we uh we went to a different uh, school or whatever and showed the guy like you know had to kind of go back through a testing type scenario to show him exactly like that we did have a black belt even though <laughs> he was probably like yeah bullshit you know because me for instance I can't fight for shit. I could do the moves. I could do the like uh defense and all that kind of stuff, you know, and, and uh, the patterns slash forms that uh, were done, but, you know, I couldn't fight for shit. 
Because it wasn't about fighting. Ta martial arts is not about fighting. It's about defense, self-defense. And, um... So... Went to that class for like a little bit and just quit it. That it didn't. I, I didn't have the heart for it anymore. Not for not for the whole thing. I actually practiced by myself. Congratulations, Admiral. Uh, every day because it became like an an obsessive compulsive problem. Kind of like playing this game every day is. To where I thought if I did not practice the taekwondo moves, the taekwondo pattern slash forms or any of that stuff if I lost it then I was nothing so I would rush myself to practice it every single day at the evening at a certain time until I just couldn't anymore I'd wear myself out from it it wouldn't even like being healthy kind of thing I go like walking slash jogging down the road come back all like wore out and then go right into that kind of like a, a warm up was walking you know that was easier than than actually doing the exercises and stuff or whatever. And then uh broke my foot that time. So I had to stop and then I just got lazy and gave up. And then like, you know, fast forward to, to now ish where you see like uh all these kids, they'll be coming in with their little white belts on or their 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 orange belts or some shit like that because there's always different colors depending on how you rank and whatnot. Um They'd come in to Dollar General, where I work, and just, you know, I, I look at them and like, oh, wow, what are, you, what are they taking? And their mom's like, oh, they take Taekwondo, you know, and they're like a yellow belt. And I'm thinking, okay, so they should know a few of the commands in Taekwondo, you know, the, some of the Korean language that is taught. Murdoch says, you know, and you smack him in the face and say, I'm your master, kneel to me. <laughs> no. So I'll, I'll look at him and I'll say, like, Trump Kenye. You know, that means attention, bow. And they'll look at me weird. I'm like, attention, bow. And they're like, oh, you know, so I'll do it to them. Like, you know, arms to the side, feet together kind of thing, bow, you know, and that kind of stuff like that. And they said, oh, you've taken Taekwondo before? I'm like, yeah, but apparently you haven't. <laughs> you know, and uh, then you, you'll ask them, like, what kind they're taking. They don't know. Why don't they know? So I got to look like looking up uh, the Taekwondo school that was teaching and stuff. It's the freaking fighting one and not the one about self-defense. That pisses me off. So I, I got on the site and I said, what type of Taekwondo are y'all teaching? You know, I was thinking about just checking it out. And uh, they, never, they never gave me an, like uh, an answer. It's one of those little offshoots where they barely do any kind of like actual working out and move stuff and whatever like that, you know, like the like how to kick and how to do this and how to protect yourself or whatever and a defense type thing versus all they want to do is go to tournaments and fight. So you watch them go to these tournaments. They had video clips on their like Facebook page. I go to watch the video clips. There's no martial arts in that. They're just sitting there swinging their arms around. And swinging their legs, but there's no, there's there's like no flow to it. There's there's no ac actual. You can tell what kind of kick someone's throwing. They're just just going nuts. And I was like, this is not, this is not it, no. And people are paying like you know, like fifty to a hundred dollars like a month or something to take these classes from people. They're just taking their money. All they're doing is just let them go fight under under a thing that says, "Hey, you can go do this. You can fight somebody else, and it's legal kind of thing." Sparring, as it's called. Versus whenever we would spar, I would try to actually make a kick. I do have like video clips of myself whenever I was uh, in Taekwondo, like actually, you know, sparring, not making real contact because I was afraid I'd hurt somebody, but. But you can tell what kind of kick it was whenever I would do a kick. And um, it's, you just don't see that now. You see people just pummeling. It's almost like if someone practices it, like they practice how to box, you know, and you can tell a boxer and their stance and stuff. But whenever they go out to fight, they just swing, you know, no, no technique whatsoever, just swing. And that's how it was. So then I got to looking at, like, okay, well, there's um, 
some video clips of their tournaments that they go to, and they're um, they're doing their patterns slash forms, which is the the moves, like the the things you practice that. Like, you know, you kick this way and swing, punch, whatever, come back to it this way. It's like a dance type thing. And um, I'm watching this, and I'm thinking, they didn't even, like, do this move correctly. They're, they're like, yelling, which is one of the things you do. You exhale, you know, and you go kihap or kia or whatever. And this girl's, like, throwing her head up in the air when she's doing it. I'm like, what the fuck is this? You gotta focus. You gotta look at what you're doing, and then, and then like just graduating them up through the belt, belt rank. And I'm like, <laughs> it doesn't make any damn sense. I mean, and you watch, okay, <coughs> you you watch uh, people who are like um, the green and the blue belts and stuff like that, and they can't even do a front kick or a side kick or something like that correctly. They look like look ridiculous doing it. And then you look at say the actual taekwondo over in Korea. And they have white belts that can, like, jump up in the air and all kick and all this kind of stuff. You know, Excellent like, doing work. advanced moves, and they're just white belts. And I'm like, oh, my God. America sucks ass sometimes. The Bob Fortress has engaged transporters. <clears throat> okay, I guess enough about that. I mean, that's just a little pet peeve of mine. We're seeing that, uh... And they have classes around here still. Even, like, a former employee that I worked with at the previous Dollar General. Apparently, he's taking Taekwondo now. and I'm like, oh my god, what kind of Taekwondo is he trying to learn? Because I could technically teach Taekwondo if I remember every damn thing. Because I, I, I ranked up to a teaching position at the school that we had. So I, would, I had a key to the building. I could start classes, end classes, that kind of thing, or whatever. This is when I was like 16 years old. 16 slash 17, 18 ish, or whatever. I had to, I started says, like 14. Maybe you should go do that. No, I can't do that now. Not at all. I'm Murdoch too. Murdoch says, sounds like a fun way to make money. I would not want to do it for money, though. That's the thing. I mean, whenever I started, our instructor, it was like maybe 20 bucks per person, you know, once a month, or that you would pay. But it was three times a week, you know, so you actually you felt like stuff and a lot of it was like for like you know the the feed of for the building whatever like that but it got to where i was going to almost like my mom couldn't afford us to go because it's my sister and myself so it was double that um and the instructor came up with an idea of like saying well you can stay or whatever because I, I see that you actually have potential or whatever because i've ranked up twice fa or faster than um a lot of the other ones in the class and um, so he made it so if I taught classes and he while he was like away out of town because he was he, he flew airplanes you know like professional flyer there uh, of like for airlines and stuff and um, I could like teach the classes and that could like pay for me and my sister to, to continue taking Taekwondo um, I'll never forget, like, uh, we even have it recorded. Um, I had I double ranked once um, before everybody else because of the technique and everything when I was taking the, the classes and stuff. And it got to the point, like, you know, whenever the instructor was just going to practice himself, he'd say, hey, I'm going to have the place open today or whatever. If you want to come by... And we can we can train and stuff. And I was like, okay, yeah, sure, I want to do that. Because I, I was addicted to Taekwondo, like taking that shit. Um, to where I, I I kept advancing a little faster and faster. And I made black belt before everybody you know, else in the class. Someone else made it with me too. Because he actually had the ambition to train too and stuff like that. So we were like two of us in the class that everyone really hated or whatever. Or thought bad of, I don't know because we ranked up faster but we but what I did I practiced like every single day that I wasn't there I practiced at school in the in the gym in the back when no one was around cuz if you start practicing people are going to start watching they're going to start mocking they're going to start start shit or whatever so I would exercise and do taekwondo and stuff in the back room of the uh, gym 
but I I would train and it would it would show like whenever you have your testings and stuff like that uh, every so many months up to you know six months or so like that you'd have a testing every once in a while just to see how you're doing and rank up if you do well and you could see a lot of people that just did not practice for shit they would forget how to do like the uh, the pattern slash form dance things or whatever you know like and it would be some simple stuff. Um, they would forget how to do these like things called one steps. Uh, they would for just forget things because they never practiced them. Where, whereas I practice them every single day, no matter what. But you can name off like a, a one of the patterns to do, and I could like just do it without even thinking about it because I knew which one was which and the steps involved in those. And a lot of them had like up to maybe fifty something like things you did within it like stepping forward this way doing this doing this kick doing this you know knife hand strike or something you know like something like that and I could do that and you can name off like what what move to do like during testing and I could I could do it versus if someone says do a crescent kick a left leg inner crescent kick or something and somebody look at them like what what's that you know I'm thinking yeah this is somebody that doesn't give a shit but um a lot of people frowned upon the idea that it was mostly under the umbrella of um, a workout center, not not necessarily for just Taekwondo, because he said we're not going to be going to tournaments because the uh, you know you had to like pay extra and stuff for that. So he just was going to like have a workout thing, but they would still rank up or whatever. And I don't know if he ever registered us in those, like because you have to register your school and pay fees and stuff like that if you go, are going to go to tournaments. Like an actual, like it's almost like it's a, an actual school school, you know, where you have like all the bullshit. He, his, he just wanted a, a fitness center type workout thing and teach people Taekwondo. And I never had a problem with that. It was pretty awesome. But um, it was so much fun. I was addicted to exercising and doing that. And then whenever, you know, it ended and stuff like that, got out of school, of course, I kept trying to practice it, but couldn't because situations would happen. It got to the point where I just gave up. It was like, okay, I'm not going to be doing that anymore, apparently. Then I broke my foot and whatnot, or snapped. Something snapped, but I never went to the doctor, so it was like clean or whatever. And it made it worse, so I sat around, ate, you know, got fat. And I was used to intaking a certain amount to keep going, you know. When you when you work out, you eat so much. And that's when I started actually working in retail and all that bullshit, so it kind of sidetracked every damn thing in my life. That's why, like, if I ever went back to going into any kind of martial arts, say Taekwondo, that I'm already in, I'd have to start from scratch. It's not worth starting from scratch. Not anymore. That's a long damn way. And shit's changed. It's changed a hell of a lot. I'm so sorry for like hijacking my the the, the stream. Murdoch says it's best not to give up on the things that are good for you. It's not from scratch, but it's a revisit to the fundamentals. Yeah, but if you you have problems later on, like you you can't go back. It's it's kind of over. Like I have a foot problem. I literally cannot stand on one foot anymore. I can stand on one fine and balance and everything still to this day, but the other one I can't, and it requires both and a combination of all a bunch of other things to to succeed at doing certain things in martial arts and unless you're taking specific types that don't require that but to get the full experience of it your whole body has to be part of it and I can't my, my whole body's it's half of it's failed so it's Murdoch it's says the problem is making excuses where there is a will there is a way losing weight will unlock things you thought you no longer could do yeah. What about fixing a heart? How about that? <laughs> There's 
There's no magic in the world for that one. <coughs> but, um... So my right foot's starting to do the damn same thing that my other foot did. What the hell? Nobody came with me from the other one? Okay, what the fuck? I probably ran off gaming with sidebirds. I'm so sorry, dude. If, if you're still here, I, I'm, <laughs> I'm appreciative, but... Yeah, because I was just constantly rambling about my own bullshit. Yeah, he's gone. <coughs> I mean, whenever you're like... <laughs> you just You have these, like, things happen to you over the course of your life, and it damages parts of you physically, internally, and all that. You can't. You can try to do things, but there's only so much of a limit you can do. That's why at work they think I'm, you know, a lot of people always think I'm lazy. It's just that I, I, I don't have it anymore. And with uh, my mom having rheumatoid arthritis and things of that nature, and me possibly having it as well, hence uh, the damaging or whatever that's happening throughout my whole body, it's not recommended that you do anything like that because it can further along problems and stuff. Like me working in retail, if I do have like what my mom has and never being diagnosed with it, it's ruining my body faster and faster the more that I work there to the point where, you know, boom, you're dead. Because um, nobody, you know, rheumatoid arthritis is not what everyone thinks it is. It's not arthritis. Rheumatoid, it affects everything. It affects your heart, it affects your liver, it affects your brain, it affects every vessel of your body. Every little thing. There's no, like, cure to it. There's only little treatments that slow it down or something like that. But in, eventually, like, if the more you do physically, the faster you wear down. And you're not, you're just, you just, boom. Until it kills you. See, before my mom ever got diagnosed with rheumatoid arthritis, she could, she's like, she could walk, like, real well, do whatever, you know, anything she wanted to. But as soon as she got that, to where, like, um, it was affecting her hands and stuff like that, um, she couldn't do things with her hands. She's like, okay, well... Well, now, you know, it affects her knees. Like, if she if she walks too far or whatever like that, her knees can swell because of the arthritis part of rheumatoid arthritis. And it tears the ligaments and the tendons and everything. It, it does, It's, a you know, autoimmune, so your immune system's killing and fighting off good tissue. So and it's causing swellings and that kind of thing. And, and I, could, I could feel that in myself because every time I'd go to the doctor and have one of those um, tests run... Murdoch says... We are always in a flux of change. You have to focus on the things you have and commit to change. Real change and how to make it happen. What you have now is wisdom. The main thing is stop eating all that bad food. Our environment is killing some of us. Seek an alternative lifestyle of health. <laughs> yeah. The uh, only thing is, is, uh, is this thing captured already or capturing? Hmm. Once you've gone so far with certain things, like your body's worn down so much, you can't. You physically cannot go back. There's no miracle cure to reversing a lot of things. It's like um, my mom's uncle, he had multiple sclerosis. Progressive. Get off the damn shed! And um, once it hit a certain amount, that's it. It's downhill. It's never uphill. When autoimmune happens to you, it's it's a done deal. I mean, no matter what you try, your mindset doesn't matter. Food doesn't matter. I mean, it just is. It's over. I mean, that it affects, like, your blood, your platelets, Sam and everything. Sam Rath says, it's like fibromyalgia. Yeah. It's, it's just, it's over. 
there are yes, there are a, a lot of things you can do to help. Murdoch says, you know. so you have given up. Scorp is on his way to disease. Okay, nice knowing you. It's not it's not on my way. It's it's there. I've been looking over the blood tests for years at um because you know you can get the CBC blood test, it's easy. But if you know what you're reading, that's one thing. Um, since I've been like what eighteen slash twenty years whenever when I was at that age is when I'd have a lot of the blood tests and things and they would say something about immune system this, immune system that. Well, I've had immune problems throughout my life. And if it's since birth type situation, you can only do so much. I mean, you, you can't re reverse a lot of things. Sure, like, you know, if you don't have any underlining, like, actual problems that run in your family or whatever like that, yeah, you can you can make yourself better, but... A lot of it is just, it's genetic. It is it is genetic. I mean, on both sides of my family, it's, it's genetic. There's no like, oh, you're going to, you eat this and become this, or whatever. You are this. That, it is it is it. You have it in your coding. Instead of it being created by something, you have it when you're born. So you're kind of like just lost. Samu Wraith says, well, that's like like cancer runs in my family. I'm just like there's no guarantee. Yeah, it, it runs in mine like severely. Like, well, that and like actual heart problems, not not heart disease brought on by bad habits or anything, but actually just genetic. You know, born with defects or some shit like that. So you're just like lost at the beginning of it. Um. That's why I, you know, a lot of people just don't give a shit about things anymore. It kind of brings you down knowing that this is going to be your future. You know. I mean, my mom already knew mine, like, right when I was born. <laughs> I knew I was going to be a piece of says, shit. I have stuff in my family, but even if it's coded, it doesn't mean you're going to get it. You shouldn't discount the effect of sugar or lack of exercise on the body, though. The decisions we make are a huge part of it. Yeah, up to a certain point, yes. Certain age, yes. Once you reach a certain part of, of just Sam life Rake in general. Says, Sorry, Scorp, you're not a POS, not from what I see. <laughs> um, once you reach a certain age and something is unlocked... Like, you know, you statistically have data in your family about here's what's going to happen to you. That's it. I mean, yeah. Enjoy your 20s and 30s because it's over after 40. <laughs> That's pretty much it. That's when um, everything in my family pretty much happens to us or whatever is the age of 40. Or maybe 35 to 40 is when it starts of anything. I mean, you can have the healthiest person in our family, which there there have been a few of them that are healthy. And as soon as they hit 40, not changing their routine or anything like that, boom, shit happens. Because something when you when you reach a certain age, your body, you know, as it's gradually getting there, it does change chemically and all that kind of stuff. It's it's like if you reach the age of 80 you will naturally, your body naturally will be thinner on, like, blood, thinner on platelets, thinner on everything. Less stuff to keep you healthy and surviving. You have to, you actually have to have medications, you know, to survive, because we're not meant to live that long. But, um, yeah. Uh. 
And see, a lot of it like... Murdoch says, hmm. I now people that are 75 years old and fucking 30 years olds. He eats avocados with fresh lemon and garlic mashed up to make avocado. He used to play drums with Frank Zappa. He's 75 years old and he fucks 30 year olds? <laughs> Murdoch says, yup. Well that depends on like, you know, what kind of a, like, genetic tree he also has as well. My genetic tree is not a healthy tree to begin with. Like, from way back. And it had nothing to do with foods. It's just the intermixing of the same people. <laughs> uh, from way back. So that automatically, like, just thro throws things at you, you know. Samu Wraith says, Well, sorry, Scorp, I buck trends. I don't believe necessarily in trends or stuff from my past. You aren't what your family line is or was. Uh, uh, there's inbreeding in my family. <laughs> and then genetic deformations and all that kind of bullshit. Wait, does that count? No. Well, I was like born flat footed too. With no support for arches at all while I was going to school. No no glasses, even though I needed them because of problems and shit like that. Murdoch says, the body is a machine though. He has always played drums. Great cardio workout. Preventing disease is so important. But sure, I'm sorry though about the bad health stuff you got. Squeal like a pig just joking. Yeah, just joking about sorry? Yeah, I got you. Samu Wraith <laughs> says, doesn't mean you're all meant to get sick. Oh, it's a fish. It's, it would happen. I mean, I, I, um, after not being in bad health at all, like, I was I was regularly exercising when Murdoch I was like in my twenties. I mean about the inbreeding, that is sad. Yeah, I mean that that's that's what. I don't know how long it went through because no, they don't talk about it that much. But it is the family, and that's like way back. You know, before the night before nineteen hundred type stuff or whatever. You know, that's it's nothing within the past century. That's the thing. It's uh, way before all that shit. You know, 1800s and probably 17s or something. I don't know. Something along those lines, but it's in the family. And it could even be as far as like 1909 kind of shit. I don't know. But um, that's why there's crazies in there too somewhere. But... Uh, there are other like abnormality type situations and like um you know Murdoch says I understand so this is recent like last week got it <laughs> no 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 I mean it's not game of thrones or anything but uh but the more you know the chromosomes and stuff not lining up correctly can affect people way down the line kind of situation and um Samu Wraith says, I do my best to be an optimist, call it a flaw, but just my way. Yeah. But um sometimes, you know, it's just what the cards are dealt. Like I'm saying, um when I was pre thirties, I was healthy. Blood pressure no bro no blood pressure problems at all. Did not eat bad. Ate healthy. Went, I would like actually jog, run, do my taekwondo, that kind of thing. Be like, I was like maybe at most 130 pounds. You know. And then I hit 28. For some damn reason that year, after doing nothing different, I started having blood pressure issues. I started having anxiety issues. 
started having um, palpitations in the heart kind of situation shit just stuff started piling and uh, then I you know went to work or whatever started having to take med med medications and things of that nature and it just it just hit out of nowhere and it changed my lifestyle completely so um, it's I don't know what happened it just did it even happened to my sister. She was like doing fine, and then all of a sudden she hit 30. And then she's like, uh, she said that she went to like the doctor or whatever like that because she was feeling odd. And uh, they, they told her that her um, her blood pressure was high. And she was like, why? You know, it's because she, she doesn't like eat this, Murdoch she doesn't eat says, that. Well, I will say this before you die, Scorp. Sometimes I think we could be related for real. My father's father's side of the family is in Arkansas. God-fearing type people. You remind me of my brother, though. <laughs> well, that's the Arkansas one. I'm from Louisiana. Like, my family is from Louisiana. I just live in Arkansas. <laughs> my family's full of the... My mom's side is Kunas, pretty much. Dad's side, I have no fucking idea. That's that's the one that's kind of in there. You know? That's the one that kind of kind of went everywhere. I mean... You never know who's your cousin and who you're related to kind of situation. The family tree goes all over the damn place. Um, Samu Wraith says, you really don't live super far from me, Scorp. Oh. Well, we're in the same time zone. We're all, we all kind of are. That's kind of odd, isn't it? <laughs> I don't only one. It's only two captures. Son of a bitch. Okay. But, um... Yeah, I mean, family tree, you know, that's a that's a, that's one of the things, the the defect type shit. Murdoch says, I will say this though, Scorp, listen carefully. When I was in college, I was eating hamburgers and other things. I got fatty liver disease. I could have stayed on that path and accepted the things you say. However, I did a 180. Murdoch For me says, to change, I stopped eating bad food. I started working out, and my health is now great. For me to change my ways of how I am now, I would need to quit working where I'm at. Completely stop working. I would need to get rid of this computer. Um, get rid of a lot of shit. Because anything that draws my attention to want to do something is that of the bad habit type stuff. Like playing this, streaming, keeps me sitting in front of the computer, you know, doing this. And then after that, and then sleeping completely, or, or just like eating something, going to sleep, going to work, constantly doing this, 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 and this. this. It's, it's just like a stress ball. And I can't because what am I going to do? You know, I can't just stop working. I'm the only one in the house that has a job. <laughs> and that's it. But uh, sacrifice your health in order to make everyone else ha happy. And Murdoch says, it's all about balance, though. Think about time on the computer is something you earn. And when you go ride a bike, a jog, the gym, swimming, whatever, after you get your heart rate up, then you feel so relaxed when you're at the computer. Oh, I've got an enlarged heart, so that's okay. Samu Wraith says, <laughs> I'm with Murdochs. You can change your diet and habits, and you can have good health. But mine, like, uh... Murdoch says, I understand what you're saying about that. This is why health issues are in the lower economic peoples. Yeah. It's whatever you can do and whatever you can afford... But I'd have to say, like, before I ever went to work, you know, relinquishing Sam freedom. Sam says, we care, Scorp, we wouldn't say things if we didn't care. Right, yeah. Without, like, relinquishing says, control. Finding a job that allows you some me time for health is very important. No, well, I don't need to work where I'm at, that's for damn sure. Then you're like, well, there's nowhere else around. <laughs> that's the thing. 
Sure, you got those little mediocre type shit, you know, where the fast food or the grocery stores or, or all that, the little little businesses that you don't know what the hell they're they're doing, but they're they're they exist for no reason. Nothing beneficial that's helpful to people, you know. It's all the it's the money thing. Do with money, we probably like live a whole hell of a lot better. At least in my opinion. Murdoch says, I understand it's hard to move, it's easy to get stuck somewhere. This has always been an issue. It's possible though, someday. Yeah. It would be possible at the end of days kind of situation. Huh? And having mental disabilities doesn't help either, damn it. <clears throat> that comes from that retarded part of the family, though. Being taught things and shit wrong. How you're raised up. Cause I used to love it. Like, when I was in, um, in high school, I loved P.E. That was, like, one of the most fun things. Everyone else would stand around. I don't go do shit. I get out there and play tennis against myself. <laughs> it was never fun though. Nobody hit it back to me. Because you know, we we had learned that our our uh, PE teacher um, wanted us to play tennis, and I thought, oh, okay, I've never played that before. So Murdoch says, I actually like playing. Yeah, I wish they had a system of throwing eggs through the computer. I know everyone would throw them or even some monkey shit at you. The possibilities. Possibilities are endless. But uh, then we like played volleyball. I thought that was fun. We played some softball. That was fun. We go to the back of the gym and do the leg workout thing where you'd have to hold your legs up a certain amount. And they tell me to stop because that was too long. And I was like, but I don't feel it. I want to feel the burn. They're like, what burn are you talking about? Yeah, damn you people don't understand shit, you know. How to how to run and breathe at the same time. I mean, I had all that, you know, when I was in school. Got out of school, and here comes, like, needing to be an adult kind of bullshit, you know. Then the health starts failing, you know. That's, <laughs> that's the kind of thing that happened. If we didn't have to physically, forcefully be adults, we could live forever as children. It just pisses me off sometimes. That and getting sick all the time, too. That sucks ass. Is this still showing up? The game. Oh, yeah. Okay, cool. Murdoch says, If you want to be a real man, start smoking. I heard that makes you manly. For real, yo. Damn it! There's like a, it's a plague of that shit. Nice day today. I think I might turn. Is that Alan? Alan! Al! Alan! Uh, yeah, I don't think you need me, you know. Yeah. Alan! 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 Al! Alan! 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 Oh, so that's not Alan. Steve, not Steve. Steve! 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 Oh no, that's Sam not Steve. Sam says, Alan. Alan! Alan! Al! Alan! 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 Does someone just say my name? Hey! 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 Do you say Alan? <laughs> hmm. That's where Steve and Alan come from if anybody ever know, wanted to wonder why. Or where? Someone just say my name. And I um, I made a clip of the uh, the monks too, but I never can remember how to spell that shit. So you can probably spell it, and make it work. Samu Wraith says, "Yeah, Murdoch's my family didn't do well smoking, so no thanks, dude, for me." Yeah, mine mine's like they were all up in that shit. My mom's still doing it. Dad did it till he died. I don't I don't understand it. The 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 addiction, I guess, is what I don't understand. It's like these people that come in 
to our store and they'll they'll buy like they'll say I want four packs of this or a carton of that like every day I'm like what the fuck man do you do you like breathe oxygen at all or what you know I mean I can understand someone like maybe doing that every once in a while you know but going through like a carton of cigarettes or half half a carton it's four packs a day kind of shit my god what in the hell you know I, I Murdoch don't understand says if you want to be cool you should smoke I mean it's too late for me I'm ready to die but hey I am gonna die doing what I want to do and nobody can tell me otherwise <laughs> winky face like that uh, that guy in Rochester New York Chorn he'd, uh, he'd always say if she smokes she pokes <laughs> uh, I mean I, I get that everyone has their needs and things and you kind of get into um, doing that or whatever like that I've never questioned myself as to saying oh hey yeah I'm going to start doing this you know no I, you just look around and you're like why Murdoch would anybody says, I am joking I hate that sentiment it's sheer ignorance <laughs> but um I just I don't I'm, I don't get it. It's like the guy that came in today that was hi obviously high on meth in our store. I mean, I don't know how you get there, but damn it, it can't be that addictive, could it? I mean, how does somebody get so messed up and continue to want that shit and think it's okay? I mean. How do you get dependent on it that badly? I just don't get it. I never will. I don't understand things, and that's my problem in the world, you know? I don't understand. No, don't attack the wrong thing, you bastard. Sam Wraith says... Yeah, especially after what it's made of. Yeah, I'm thinking, okay, drain cleaner or some shit. I don't know what it's made out of. I always just assume drain cleaner. You know, just certain chemicals or shit like that. Whatever Walter White's making today. Kind of. But, um... I just don't... I don't, I don't get it. I think the only thing I've ever been addicted to is just eating food. But not, not that severe to where... You're fucking bloated every day or something, you know. To where you can't hardly breathe because you need more to inhale. I mean, that, 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 hmm. And, you know, caffeine doc says, is, is... It's uh, like a behavior thing. Something about putting it in your mouth. Like a Freud fixation. Something mental about it cause yeah, nicotine barely does much besides constrict your blood vessels, which isn't good. Coffee is better. Sam well, Wraith says, coffee's a, rat poison for one scorp and yeah, bleach. You know, coffee slash caffeine. Caffeine is a blood uh, vessel constrictor as well, but not as bad as uh, as nicotine. It's it's shit's addictive as you know. But yes, you know, um, anything that's organic. You know, people that do smoke marijuana, what you know, it's okay. Go ahead. You know, if you need to. I know what it does, and it's it's like hell on your lungs, but it makes your body feel better, whatever, you know. But still, to, like, just want to pretty much down a, a bottle of bleach, like you're saying there, Samurai, and rat poison, or whatever Samurai else they says, add to that shit. I tried it when I was young, All nasty scorp it was. Yeah, uh, I, I just don't know, like, how it's addictive. If it doesn't have any kind of natural stuff in it, how does it... How does somebody just keep going with it, you know? I don't get it. And I never will because I'm not like everybody else. I don't understand things because I'm stupid, you know? I mean, people could tell, like, a joke that they get, but I don't get it because I have not experienced life like everyone else has, you know? They'll, they'll like, uh, use 
certain slang words, and I'm like, I don't know what the hell that means. <laughs> I've not been exposed to that type of whatever. People will come in and they'll talk about, like, drugs this, drugs that, because I have long hair, you know. They look at me as if I'm, like, a hippie or something. Have it tied back, you know, whenever I'm at work, kind of thing, with a ponytail holder thing, whatever. And, um, people will just start talking to me about, like, drugs or something, or or getting drunk here and there doing that. I'm like, that that's not, I don't give a shit about that. I don't, that's not even me. So even today, um, whenever this guy came in, he got, like, two beers or something, and and he came back, and he got two more, and he said, those two just weren't enough. And I said, so you're going to buy two more for your party, Murdoch huh? says, too much caffeine, yes, but coffee improves microbiome diversity, improves cognitive function, reduces risk of gallstone diseases, decreases cancer risk, heals damaged cells, lowers risk for Parkinson's disease, protects against diabetes, improves bowel regularity, increases physical activity levels, decreases stroke risk, helps maintain weight loss, protects liver health, decreases inflammation markers, decreases risk of heart failure, lowers risk of depression. My mom should be good to go then. She can drink coffee all day. I've never drank coffee. <clears throat> but, um. Samu Wraith says, Yeah, I need to drink more coffee, lol. You're like the coffee guy on Mad TV. <laughs> and we could build our dreams. No suspicious man. But this guy, whenever he came back and he got like two more beer or beers, I was like, uh, "So uh, you're inviting two more people to your party, honey?" He says, "No, they just ran out too quick." He said, "You don't drink, do you?" And I was like, "Nope, never had a sip. Couldn't tell you one way or the other which tastes what, or whatever like." He said, "Sometimes that's a good thing because people like get hooked on the alcohol." For some reason. I don't know that I could like wake up or, or want to wake up and vomit on purpose. I hate Murdoch vomiting says, automatically. But drinking too much caffeine is bad so one cup in the morning. Best not to drink all day cause you burn out your receptors and always need more why some drink all day. Kids that drink too many Red Bulls have same issues so when they drink one and it's not enough. That's one thing I can't understand either is the excessive need for children to drink Red Bulls or monster drinks or any kind of energy drink. Children! <laughs> I've seen it several times, like, these parents will come in and one of them will say, hey, do y'all have any baby bottles? I'm like, yeah, sure, you know. Murdoch says, <laughs> Red Bull is not coffee though, so that stuff isn't good for you. No, I've never had a Red Bull either or a monster drink. But they'll, they'll come in and they'll say, hey, like, do you have a sippy cup? You're like a sippy cup? And they're like, uh, yeah, for a kid about two years old. I'm like, yeah, we have sippy cups. And they said, where are you Red Bull at? I'm thinking you're gonna give Red Bull to a kid, two. The fuck is wrong with you? Murdoch says, <laughs> but having the extra B complex isn't bad from time to time. Samu Wraith says, I never understand anyone drinking two or more Red Bulls. <laughs> Dude. <laughs> Whenever I went into uh, the doctor's office one time to just get a prescription refill, the walls were so thin there, because this is like one of those little, you know, small town clinics, you know, it's not like one of those, you go up an elevator or some shit kind of bull, you know. Um, the walls are kind of paper thin where you can hear it, and in the other room, this guy was talking about, like, I heard the doctor go, yeah, well, hey, what you doing here, you know, what's going on with you? And he says, well, during the day when I'm working, my heart's racing and it's pounding out of my chest and I get all sweaty and, and I think I'm about to have a heart attack and I don't know what's going on with me, you know. And he and the doctor says, well, do you drink any energy drinks? He goes, energy drinks? He says, yeah, Red Bull. And he goes, yeah, I have four of those a day. <laughs> and then like, and even myself in the, in the other room, I'm like, oh my God. And he says, four small ones? He said, no, them big ones. He said, I just like the taste of it. And the doctor said, you shouldn't be drinking that many, you know. And he goes, oh, okay, well, 
Can I still drink Samuel about three or four, you know? Duh, well, that's why. Yeah. And, and the doctor told him to cut back on his Red Bull, you know. And I don't I don't understand, like, people don't pay attention to the, the stuff on the bottle or, or cans of that shit that tell you, you know, what not to do. Even, like, when I worked at the other Dollar General, we had this guy that came in there. We called him Stony because he was always high on, like, something. Congratulations. But it was the laid-back high. He wasn't, like, like, you know jittery or anything like that kind of high he was slow high you know um and he would come in and he would get six bottles of five hour energy drinks he'd sit out in his car and he'd drink them one after the other like boom 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 you know just right after the other and one day you know like we got to notice and he wasn't coming in when you know then like a few weeks go by he ain't, he's not been in for a while and then when he finally comes in, I say, hey, man, how you doing? I ain't seen you in a while. He says, yeah, I've been in the hospital. I blacked out, passed out right on the floor. and uh, They had to put me in the ER and critical or whatever and for like several, uh, like a week, you know. And I said, oh? He said, yeah, I, I kind of got to where I was feeling fainting all the time. And, and uh, they asked me about, you know, when I woke up, like, if I drank any uh, kind of energy drinks, and I told them I drank six of those five-hour energy drinks a day, and they told me that was too many, so I came in here today, and I'm, gonna, I'm just going to start getting only three of them. I'm like, motherfucker, you need to go, like, even worse than me. <laughs> Shit. But he would do that. He'd, like, <laughs> drink, like, six of those damn things a day and, like, passed out. They found him in the floor. So he's, like, out for a week. Someone's Murdoch like, uh, says, yeah, that's bad. So many people don't know and become victims. It's an issue all over America. A general was on TED Talks discussing how obesity is an actual national defense issue. He backed his claims up with hard science and statistics. Basically, we were healthy back in 80s and 90s and since then it's gotten bad. People yeah. joining the military come in fat unable to do shit. Samu Wraith says, six... Good lord. Yeah. He cut himself down to only three, though, so. And then he cut himself down to one. So I, I guess it, he got better. But uh, he said he just, you know, again, liked the taste of it. <laughs> uh, yeah. I, d I wouldn't go into the military for shit. I'd, I'd be useless anyway. I have no, I have no qualities whatsoever that would help anybody. Throw me out there in the middle and just have him shoot me already, you know? Um, yeah, we'd have people like that. We'd have people that would come in who were diabetic, get them an energy drink, and sit out in their car, give themselves an insulin shot, and then down the drink. Like, what the fuck? You know? Um, it just amazing to me sometimes. And then again, like you, you see the kids. There's this uh, like 13 year old dude that comes in once a day and he'll get him like uh, one of those white uh, monster drinks. I'm like, uh, just Murdoch because. Says, like, I like the taste of cocaine or eat nothing but desserts cause I like sugar or whatever. It's true, many people don't understand their own body, how it works. It's all in the blood. My, uh... What?! Since my grandmother has, like, a vascular dementia, and also, like, blood... Her blood is so thin that she doesn't develop platelets anymore. So she's been having brain bleeds, and she's expected to pass away within, like, maybe a week or whatever. Um, which is sad. But her bone marrow doesn't create platelets. Or the very little few that they do, they don't last. But like. Romeo and Diazulu says, Hey man, I was lurking when you said that the other day. Sorry, bro. Um, but, um... Uh, like the other day, my mom was telling me... I make my bunghole angry! I demand TV! Give me all your TV! All your TV, now! 
And she was uh, telling me, like, they weren't going to be feeding my grandmother because she was, like, slipping in and out of consciousness. And if they had a feeding tube down her and she can't, like, swallow, then she just would, you know, like, vomit it all up anyway and wouldn't take the nutrients. And then they, my mom was like, well, what about putting, like, a feeding tube in her stomach? And he said, it's one of the worst things you can do because they wouldn't absorb it. So they're not feeding her, and she hasn't eaten in over a week. And they're just going to let her not get any nutrients at all and starve her. Because when you have dementia up to a certain point, you don't feel hungry. You stop eating. You do nothing. Your body just shuts down because your brain, you know. Apparently, like, her, her blood flows up to her, her brain swirls around longer than it should and then back down again but also leaks into the brain cavity putting pressure up against one side of her skull and to where she passes completely out for a long time long periods of time then kind of wakes confused looking and not knowing you know how to can't talk and stuff and um so she's expected to like pass Murdoch says soon. Sorry, Scorp. What does she have? Um, whenever my grandfather had passed away from heart failure, um, she had been diagnosed with a vascular dementia type situation where there wasn't enough blood getting into her brain or whatever, so it was causing dementia-like type things to happen. Her family known for having multiple sclerosis, Alzheimer's, um, you name it kind of situation, you know. And hers was going to be dementia. She kept getting worse and worse and worse, and then finally they put her in a Sam memory Rick care says, ward. Yeah, my grandma passed away six months ago. She had dementia. Yeah, um, well, they, they get to where they don't know who you are. Then they get to where they don't eat. Then they get to where they don't move. They become like a vegetable, pretty much. My grandmother kept having episodes where she would just like fall and hit her head on things like just lose balance all of a sudden and just fall and um and she's been in the hospital like ICU like maybe this whole past month and they've like they found that her her bone marrow was not producing blood platelets anymore or not enough to sustain through the body because blood platelets are good for you know clotting and thickening blood and all that and, and they one blood platelet lives for 10 days you know and so hers weren't making so they Murdoch would says my grandmother had that have you researched it there may be some new studies trying to reverse it maybe someday yeah it's it's too Sam late for Rick my grandmother says, yes she thought I was her son not grandson yeah and she's completely like forgotten everybody Ours has, like, at this point. It's like everyone's a stranger. She's always looking for her husband who's passed away, or she's looking for her dead sister. Or, um, eats maybe one little cookie a day kind of thing, and doesn't eat things on her plate, kind of, kind of stopped eating, and, and just withering completely, you know. And it's been stressing my mom out a whole lot, and her other siblings and things, and... And I've been doing nothing but working the whole Murdoch time, so she, says, she tells me. I was super close to my grandparents. In a way, they were my only family. The only ones that gave a shit about me. Oh. But, um, my grandmother had, like, uh, she had breast cancer back in her 70s. Um, she, <laughs> she and my grandfather raised their great-grandkids. Because uh, the mother is like a dope head, you know, and always bumming money off of my grandmother and stressing them out and stuff like that. And I'm thinking that pushed most of it into more of a dementia thing, the stress from all of that. Dealing with uh, babies and kids and stuff. There was like maybe four kids living in their house when they're like in their 70s. Romeo and Diazulu says... GPA had dementia and pancreatic cancer. Pretty sure the cancer is what killed him. 
but the falls didn't help. Luckily when he fell he didn't break anything except the wall. Oh, wow. Samurath says, yeah my grandma didn't even look like my grandma at the end that was super hard for me Scorp so I relate. Yeah, I've seen pictures of... My mom's she kept going, you know, like, hey, you need to come see her, you know, stuff like that. And I said, well, she wouldn't know who I am. She doesn't even know who you are, you know. But, uh, you know, you, yeah, you do need to, like, visit them and stuff. And I'd always be working. I said, well, I could take off work. She's like, no, you need to work, you know, because we need the money here. And I'm like, okay. And, um, so she's dealt with that. And, but, yeah, it's cancer, yeah. The cancer Romeo India Zulu quick. says, she might not, but it may be something you'll regret if you don't. Oh, I've, I've regretted a whole hell of a lot of shit, that's for damn sure. But it's it's to the point where no one can visit her right now, though. They're just waiting. It, they're, they're, with, they're expecting within, like, the week or whatever. So she said, be, be sure to tell them at work that you'll have to take off for a funeral. And with Dollar General, you never know if you can or not. I mean, um Samu Wraith says, Yeah, I visited once and I was glad I did, but I hadn't seen her in a long time anyway, but better to have seen her than not at all. Yeah. I've barely visited like whenever my uh my mom's dad was dying of congestive heart failure. I barely went over there, but again, I'm the only one working at home. <laughs> with a steady job. I mean, my stepdad does do a little contract, or did, until he retired because he wanted to be a professional uh, fish guide, fisherman person or something on the lake we live on, where people pay him to come fish with him because he has a live scope or whatever, you know, on his boat. And that apparently isn't panning out, so he works a little here and there and complains about not having money. Where well, there I am at the damn Dollar General all the damn time. And mom can't work. I mean, her physically she can't anymore. Um, Samu Wraith says, my mom would relate to yours. She took her mom's passing rough, so I'm glad I take care of her to help her through it. Yeah. They've, they've always says, expected something. Well, at least you don't smoke meth. <laughs> well, yeah. Is that what they do with it? I don't know what, what how people... Do math. I mean, from other than Romeo what I've seen, and just, uh, says, we were able to see GPA as he passed. I bawled like a little kid. Told him sorry. He said, "For what?" I was like, "Well, everything." We don't have the time to go down the list. Right. I was told by my. Sam Wraith uh, says, "At Murdoch's thought they sniff it." All I know is about like the whole like how people do meth is just watching Breaking Bad. I think Jesse Pinkman like did it by smoking it. I'm not sure. Um. Yeah, not not going to have a list. I was uh, my my grandfather told me like during the passing or or whenever uh, the death of my cousin's son, whenever he got hit by that car out in front of my grandparents' house, and my grandfather watched it happen. Um. He told me at that funeral that I had better not go before him. And uh, and after after that, Murdoch pretty much says, when his health went down. Just saying I feel sorry for Scorp makes me think my life could always be worse, but at least it's not so bad he is doing meth. <laughs> uh, <laughs> the fuck? Um, but yeah, my, my grandfather's health, like, completely collapsed. You know, he had had, like, a, a heart attack, because uh, in the family, everybody, like, heart attack at, like, you know, less than 40 or 40 or whatever. Um, but the congestive heart failure happened, like, as soon as that, he, he's, his, he died inside, and his health just declined. And the stress from all that, and the stress from my grandmother keep asking the same damn question every five seconds, you know. Um... Even hospice saw it. But yeah. Now the only thing I regret from that is uh before he died he had asked me if I could come over to his house 
to sit with him and, and uh, record him talking through all the old home movies that he had recorded over the ever since like you know the, he's like born in the 30 something or whatever so he always loved video cameras when he had them and he wanted me to make like a little commentary type track for all the videos so it, it would live on and I never did that because I was always at work Anytime I would want to schedule to go like to see them or anything like that, they'd say, "Well, you you have to work that day, or so and so's sick, or whatever." You know, kind of bullshit kept happening all the damn time. And uh, I just got to where I just gave up trying to to go do anything. But yeah, followed like a little kid. But it's at least you know y'all got to see him and stuff. I mean, I di I didn't hardly get to and but then again my grandfather always called me like a piece of shit kind of names and stuff like that too as but not really like to say a piece of shit but he felt like just disappointed in everything I've ever done you know why can't you be more like your cousin and go hunting and fishing with me you know kind of stuff and and whenever you know the allergy thing that time when I went to go help him and, and I, the pollen made me sneeze you ain't got that fixed yet you know It was just uh, like a down down talking. Never one of those things like um, Murdoch says, proud or anything. Yes, yeah, stop playing with your dildos and go hunting. Yeah, <laughs> but it was it was always a thing like that, you know. Like I couldn't play sports and stuff because uh, my allergies kept me from like doing things and whatever, and my face would swell up and all this kind of stuff. So being outside hurt a lot, and you know couldn't breathe and. So he kind of like just shrugged me off as a grandson, as even though it was a, his first grandson. He just went to the next one, the grand, next grandchild, you know. I'd come over and he'd help, have me help him do stuff out in his little barn slash shop or whatever. And, and then um, done with that, you know, he'd go to his deer camp and stuff and stay gone. And, and But um, so it was like a little little thing, you know. Got to where I just didn't go see my grandparents. My other ones, they died before anything. I mean, like I had mentioned, was it was yesterday. My dad's dad was 50 years old when my dad was born. So he, like, passed away when he was, like, 83 Murdoch years says, old. And I'm the black him. sheep of the family. Fuck him. I'm better cause of it. I will appreciate something when I decide to. If not into hunting when I'm young then fuck you maybe later in life I find something I like similar or maybe not but it's my paragative. Yeah. It was like a, a whole thing like if, if you didn't do what what the parent or the grandparent did then you know fuck you kind of situation. This is what you know this is what boys and men are supposed to do so you if you don't do it then you know you're, you're not part of the group kind of situation. So that's kind of how it became like uh. Just like the little outcast in the family. Prerogative. Yeah. It's like that time I went over there and visited my grandparents, and I was wearing like a pictured type shirt, you know, something with a design or whatever on it. Just, you know, what you, what you wear whenever you're like, you know, whatever. Just a shirt. And he said I wouldn't need to wear those kind of things, so he took me shirt shopping. And we got the plainest uh, shirts that, you know, kind of like you'd see the kids wearing in the 50s and 60s or some shit like that. But, um, yeah, it didn't hang much around my other grandparents because they were older grandparents, you know. They were already in their, you know, late 60s and 70s whenever I was born, so. And then they pass away, like, 10 years later, and you're like, didn't really know them, you know. Remember, like, you took pictures with them, but t you didn't know what the hell was going on. Murdoch says, that's weird. My grandparents were always younger than me. Your grandparents were always younger. Dude, that can happen, though. <laughs> Don't be Sam joking Rick about says, that. It can happen. Yeah, retail pisses me off sometimes, Scorp practically begging to get time off. Yeah. Like, I don't know how we're going to, like, be at work, um... Uh, this next week coming up, because to today, okay, our um, manager, who's 
we're you know who's who we're getting rid of pretty much it's uh leaving us well she came to the store today having not been there for a long day like for a few weeks because of the whole situation and server timed out yay all right hopefully the stream didn't test testing test is this the shit that was happening that day that is it still like recording yeah okay I don't know why that happens. But, um, after not being at our store for, like, yeah, a few weeks or whatever, since this whole, like, thing where she backed into one of the co-workers and hit the co-worker's truck. Says, they think, oh, that one key person misses it's the end of store operations they need to learn to get by without me. <laughs> right. Um, so the manager was there today. And I have expected to, whenever I got to the store, that the manager was going to be there. You know, I was kind of dreading it, because you never know what kind of mood this person's going to be in, or if they're going to be a, they're going to fake happy to your face kind of situation. Um, but she wasn't there. I was like, okay. I go in and I ask what happened, you know. Why, why wasn't she there? I get told that um, while a customer was in the store today, or whatever, the manager was talking to someone at the front door about her personal life and the customer didn't think that was appropriate for this for like the store or people to hear in the store so she um, this person called in on the manager reporting this stuff or whatever so the district manager thought the best possible thing to do was to remove the manager from the store for the day for the rest of the week pretty much and throw her in another store just to get her out of there and uh, the only thing is, is uh, the person that called in on her was a previous employee that was there before I ever got to that store. So, yeah. So now we don't have that manager again for like another week. <laughs> After not being there for three weeks already. And our assistant manager, who's going to be our manager, has to go out for training for two weeks this coming Saturday so we're gonna be there understaffed by ourselves possibly not getting days off or whatever so these next two days that I have off I better make the best of them I bet I guess uh, it's gonna be a rough ride and then like we have inventory like two days after the manager our assistant who's gonna be manager comes back So we have two days to get ready for an inventory which usually takes like three weeks at most, two at the least. And we're, we're completely understaffed. I mean, like, you know, we've got a guy that can't run a register. He can put freight out. He's, when he got hired, like before he ever got hired, he had like a, a vehicle accident that messed his brain up so he doesn't remember things and can't use his left hand or whatever. He's like 50% of his left hand can't be used, or I don't know what it is. Um, and then we have the one that's now in college that can't sell tobacco or alcohol, that uh, works like one day a week. So that means there's like only three of us Sam that will be available. Yeah, that I think happened to our store manager, Scorp. He got turned in by another former manager for some kind of improper conduct, so he's been relocated to another store. So now we have a new store manager. Now our main lead may be leaving too, if the rumor's correct. So, yep, fun times. Isn't it just great? That means, like, your scheduling can get completely just whoppy-jawed. Everything can get just turned around. It's unpredictable. Like, you know, you can... I know for you at Walmart, y'all have, like, the automatic, like, created scheduling, right? Like, an advanced scheduling type thing. Um, ours is generated, but the manager manually goes back and changes it, depending on the needs of the store. Ugh. But, um... Yeah, so there'll only be like three of us who can work the store. And that sucks ass. But I'm sure after after we get over this hump, we're probably going to have like Sam people Ray hired. Says, 
Yeah I guess if I have to squeal like a girl to keep my schedule guess you know do what I gotta I can't have a schedule that's all over the place. Yeah. The, the erratic scheduling, I call it variable scheduling, to where you can't make any plans because it could change, you know. That just pisses me off sometimes. <coughs> yeah, the assistant asked me a question today about um, her vacation time that she had taken. Wondered why she didn't get paid for it. And, uh, because, you know, Sam I'm the Wraith one that has says, all the answers. Pisses me off, too. And, um, I said, well, um, let me see when your vacations and stuff were. And I said, that's what it is. I looked at this. I said, yeah, I see it. I see what's wrong. And she goes, what is it? And she said, I said, well, you were scheduled to work 30 some odd hours for this work week. And you put in for three days vacation. Well, it's only going to give you up to 40 hours for your vacation. And she goes, so it's going to give me 40 hours. I said, no. It's going to give you up to that, which means the 30-some-odd hours you were scheduled to work plus anything up to 40 is what you'll get paid. She said, well, that sucks, because she thought she'd get a big check, you know, the vacation days plus the hours. No. Samu Wraith says, <laughs> they used to do that to me. I went to HR at least five times and told them, hey, my mom's not in good health. I can't have a wild schedule, so give me something that's set. <laughs> I think, uh, what is it, department are under control. Excellent work. Department heads or whatever like that there at Walmart have a, a set schedule versus if you're not full-time or whatever, it's it could be anywhere all over the place. That's the stuff that just pisses me off. That's what I dealt with for like seven and a half to eight years at the other store was a manager that would just randomly schedule you like to work at say eight o'clock to five o'clock in, in one day and then come in again like at ten o'clock or whatever or, or come in at Sam four Wraith in the says, evening yeah I'm full-time fortunately but was still dealing with that yeah so it, it would be all over the place where you couldn't like Sam schedule Wraith to do anything says, glad no more oh you got full-time okay got full-time and less hours or <laughs> Murdoch says, me. officially the most depressing stream of all time, LOL. you damn right. Everything, everywhere, all at once. is <laughs> a proper name for it. But it's that movie. And I totally feel like I've ignored Riz. I'm so sorry, Riz. You you meant, you, you talked earlier Sam about Wraith your... Sam says, no, it's 32 at least hours a week. Oh, you get them, Sam okay. Wraith says, sorry, Murdochs. Yeah, um... Sam Wraith says... And Riz. Yeah. Murdoch says, I will watch that movie score. Did you watch the, the trailer for it? Watch the trailer first, because I don't know if you'll think it's too crazy or not. Um, but yeah. Murdoch I mean, says, It's okay. I appreciate being real. We all real here. That's right. We're not imagining ourselves, are we? Yeah, uh, I'm full time at uh, Dollar General, and I'm. I'm Supposed Sam to always get 30 hours. Anyone watched the She-Hulk TV show? Watched the first episode, which was basically the trailer. That, that's it. Samu Wraith says, <laughs> except Gary the Klingon Scorp, LOL. Right. Gary the Klingon for the win. I feel like I buzzed through this damn thing. Archer. <coughs> yeah, but I I get um, thirty hour work week it's supposed to be guaranteed, but I would like to have less with the full time benefits kind of situation, which I don't get any benefits. I don't pay for the health care bullshit because then I'd have nothing to take home to actually pay bills and shit. So I don't get health care. Samu Wraith says. I almost thought about making Gary the Klingon's brother or something like Jerry. I don't know, haha. -ha. Jerry, <laughs> Jerry, Gary's brother. <laughs> but um, when I was uh, working part time, I was getting like thirty-five hours a week. When I became Sam full time, says, I started getting twenty. Jerry the Klingon. 
They started giving me like 20 to 25. That's when I first started becoming full time. They paid less so that it equaled out the same no matter what, even though the pay bonus or whatever, which was only 25 cents. Um, but now they want me to do that, that whole 30 thing. Like all the damn time. 35 ish hours. I don't like that. I don't. I, I want to have freedom to do stuff. And I can't do that if I have. If, if work's always lingering over me. I mean, I'd probably go out there and fix my damn Volkswagen. Get it running again if Sam I had Rake the time. Says, yeah, these yearly raises they give, they've just turned into a joke. They give us 25 cents more an hour per annual year we are there. So this this past like July, whenever it was another year, that's that's like 25 extra cents more an hour. That's really good. In, that's an incentive. Sam isn't Wraith it? says, "Yep, same." Y'all y'all get it too. 25 cents. Damn Walmart. Fuck. It makes you really feel good about working there, doesn't it? Makes you feel like a real good team person, doesn't it? <laughs> Sam Wraith says, "25. That's everyone." When I started at um, Family Dollar, I think the minimum wage was like six something, and then it increased to like seven twenty-five. And I thought, "Oh boy, cool!" You know, we didn't get raises and shit there. Not not annu no Sam annual Rick nothing. Says, yeah, real incentive. Then I went to Family uh, to Dollar General, and I was getting seven twenty-five an hour. Thinking, okay, starting out brand new with this company, it's minimum wage. I'm okay with that. And everyone else in my same position, which at the time I was just a regular sales associate, you know, just basic ba basic level, you know. And I had, like, others working with me. I found out later on they were making, like, $8 an hour. So they were making $0.75 cents more than I was an hour, and I had experience in retail, and they didn't. Like, what the fuck? <laughs> so guess what? I didn't do a lot. I thought people without experience... Don't doing much, they get paid more money. So if I if I don't like work too much, maybe they'll pay me more money. So I worked and worked and worked and worked and worked. I had my little twenty five cent raises every year. Had a fifty cent bonus raise because they wanted me to become a key holder that didn't have keys to the building but could do voids and shit, which I already did that anyway as a basic employee. And then, like, you know... Samu Wraith says, Yeah, that's like team leads. They get paid so much better than us. Yeah. There's a uh, guy that used to work with this at Dollar General. He became a team lead uh, at Walmart here, around here. He, he's in charge of uh, toy department, um, dog food, um, lawn and garden, and something else. I can't remember. And that's that's like you know he's that's his thing to do for team lead and he's always wanted me to go like to quit uh, Dollar General and go work there in the toy department like you know someone that, that can recover at night and and whatnot and maybe do some freight or something like that and and I'm like nah eh, y'all have more expectations there than here I'm lazy eh, you know. But he's he comes in and I ask him like how things are going and stuff and he's always he's kind of burned out all the time just wore the fuck out because of all the things he has to do he talks about his mods that he has to do which I learned what those were from him talking about them we don't call them that at Dollar General nor did we call them that at Family Dollar we call them schematics at Family Dollar we call them planograms at uh, at Dollar General and y'all call them mods at Walmart. He was talking about how many, he said something like 24 sections in a day or something he had to do, and he was understaffed for it, and I'm like, damn, dude, that sounds like a bunch of fucking work that they want, and it's always some stupid shit, too, that they want done, in any company, you know? Like, moving something, like, that's, that's sitting on a shelf where everyone can find it and they want to move it like four feet away and, and up like to the next shelf and, and then people can't find the shit it pisses me off leave the damn thing alone
I cannot, in the, for the life of me, remember how to spell that damn thing for Ponty Python. Hell, I got it for you, though. You know, I got the I got the monk thing for you, but I just can't remember how to spell it. And of course, Firefox pops up going, "Hey, you give me you mean permissions? You give me permissions? Don't mind." Pie Jesu Domine, Dona Eis Requiem. Pie Jesu Domine, Dona Eis Requiem. Pie Jesu Domine, Dona See if that gets copyrighted. Old Boris came out with another video on his other channel, or his, his original channel. Vodka taste testing. If anybody ever watches Life of Boris. Uh, yep. Now I feel like shit. Anything come on TV tonight? I get to go into work an hour later, so I wanna, I wanna stay up an hour later, or I wanna stay to where I can sleep. I need to go to sleep though. Samu Wraith says, "Domini." Yes. Riz, I apologize for seeming as though I, I ignored what you were saying. Samu Wraith says, come on, command work. It did work. I, ty I typed it out correctly and it, it played and stuff. Did it not? I mean, I heard it and saw it on my end. I gotta figure out what the hell happened to that. Samu Wraith says, did it. Type it. Do mine AE. Pie Jesu Domine, Dona Eis Requiem. Pie Jesu Domine, I like the one part where the guy they like staggers. <laughs> Endeavors. Complete Iconian TFOs. One is Sam left. Race says, the board hitting too funny. Defeat Zinkethi Ground. Here we go again with the same damn Zinkethi shit. That's a piece of, that's what pisses me off. Out of all the random things to do out there, it gives me the same damn thing. Samu Wraith says, yeah, we on console have a red alert. Oh. Let's see. 
What do we want to do? We need a TFO. Iconian TFO. You're goddamn right. Uh, I want to do Bug Hunt if that one's available. Just something about... I don't want to do Gateway to Great Thor because that's a piece of shit. I don't want to do anything about Herald Spheres. I don't want to do Corn Fez or whatever the fuck that's called. Or Brother of the Sword. I want to do Bug Hunt because it's running around with other people goofing off. That's what I want to do. That's what I'm going to do. Samu Wraith says, Why does that sound like Optimus Prime saying that? Where? What? Huh? Optimus Prime. Optimus Prime. I don't know. What, what, what sounds like Optimus Prime? I don't do an Optimus Prime. My voice is not deep enough for, for Optimus Prime. Samu Wraith says, The GD right. Oh, oh, I have no idea. It's Walter White, um, Brian Cranston. It's from uh, Breaking Bad. He says uh, to that guy, "Say my name, say my name," and he goes, "You're Heisenberg." And he goes, "You're got right." You know. I don't like saying GD either. For some reason, I don't like saying it. I will avoid it at all costs. Yep. Okay, well, let's see. Let's just do the... Well, if I did that, it would cancel out that, wouldn't it? Pie su donne man Donde is he says Requiem Requiem? It says Requiem? It's Requiem Smack! Pie Jesu Domine, Dona Eis Requiem. Sam Wraith says, Now I need to get the Yazoo Domine, <laughs> Dona Eis Requiem. Pie Jesu Domine, Bring out your dead. Yeah, I like that part too. Bring out your dead. I'm not dead. <laughs> I feel happy. Yeah, damn, I misspelled it. Hey, hey, careful, man. There's a beverage here, huh? You see what happens when you find a stranger in the Alps?
Okay. Samu Wraith says, but daddy my zipper's stuck lol. Daddy my zipper's stuck. Zipper stuck V. Zipper stuck. Daddy, my head fell off. I hope your head was in it. Goodbye. Find yourself, mister. My zipper's stuck. Get in the car, Junior. But, Daddy, my zipper's stuck. Get in the car, Junior. <laughs> Daddy, my fly is still open. Let me tell you something, Junior. If you ever embarrass me like that again, I'm going to get an axe, and you're never going to have to open your fly again. <laughs> Daddy? Daddy? <laughs> Poor Junior. Make ready, warriors. The lightning round begins now. Ah, it's that Clinton guy again. Look at that right there. Oh. If you ever felt as though you just had this damn bone that would go away. It just brings the Voth, doesn't it? Space. 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 Oh, yes. Ride that horsey down to town. Ride that horsey. Horsey! Horsey, miss. Of course, he must <laughs> Your gun doesn't work. Some pack of lightning, very, very frightening. <laughs> Defiler. Ugh. 
What are we shooting at? Okay. Okay, where's the bigger challenge? Now, you fought with honor, despite the odds. I look forward to watching your next efforts in the arena. In the arena. In the arena. Let's make the most to make it a better days. New bladder control for his and hers. Daddy, daddy, my zipper stuck. Daddy, 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 zipper stuck. Zip, 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 zipper stuck. Daddy, 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 daddy zipper stuck. Fine, we'll just cue all the damn ones then. Fuck it. Fucking thing sucks! We'll do it live. We'll do it live! Fuck it! Do it live! I can, I'll write it and we'll do it live! <laughs> Samu Wraith says, all this and more on Reading Rainbow. Yes. But you don't have to take my word for it. Butterfly in the sky. I can go twice as high. Take a look. Then I book a reading rainbow. I can do anything. <coughs> Things to know and ways to grow. A reading rainbow. I can go anywhere. You know I shine all the time. Reading Rainbow. LeVar Burton, LeVar Burton. Da -da -da. Ba -da -ba. Pay paradise and they put up a parking lot. The boot of geeking meat again, the big old half life. They don't it all. We see what you go. Sam Wraith says, you Can you imagine you Gary the Klingon hosting Reading Rainbow? LOL. Reading Rainbow Klingon condition. <laughs> oh, I see. They followed the waterfall. The rocks here are causing a lot of interference. We should take another set of scans to get our bearings. It'd be a nice planet to go camping on. Damn it, I don't know how to work this fan stuff now. Who wants to stop you? I just want the damn shit, man. But turd flies in the sky. I can't go twice as high. Take a look, it's in a book, a reading rainbow. Samu Wraith says, bank left Mr. Snot. Bank left Mr. Snot. Bank left Mr. Snot. Mr. Snot. A chill, sir. A chill, sir. A chill. Um, what have I told you about your sneezing? You bastard. 
TV is my friend. So, there are some Zinkethi with a taste for battle. Cool. Yeah, okay, whatever. Why would they destroy entire planets? Scans indicate they took the path to okay. the They must find some tactical advantage in these actions for some reason. Pudding, perhaps. Readings and Kathy life signs ahead. They are waiting for us. Uh, waiting. Good. They were waiting. We will meet them in glorious battle. I've had this on advanced the whole time. What the fuck? <laughs> Dippy Sayods. Biosuits. Fire. Computer? Computer? Ah. Hello, computer. Just use the keyboard. The keyboard? How quaint. Are you bored with the keyboard? Sam Wraith says, Hello, computer. Hello, computer. Up your shaft. I need to get that sound clip. Ah, here we go. Oh my god, it's always this one, isn't it? Full speed of slow. Back in the day, the Enterprise would travel nose down. Me first. Chong, ping pong, I think I brought my ding dong to the planet. The shipyard is secure. To the planet. I've had the mission set it <laughs> advanced the whole time. No wonder it takes me longer than I think it should. Could go on together with suspicious minds, suspicious minds, and we could build our dreams on suspicious minds. The star base is secure. One thing I know, I don't really care about myself at all. The troop transport down to the planet.
<clears throat> well, can't you see what you're doing to me when I don't believe a damn thing I've been saying? We could go on together with suspicious minds. And we could build our dreams on suspicious minds. Those gateways are emitting intense levels of theta radiation. Theta! Close them. Theta! Warning, bitty bitty bitty. Running, running, running to the planet. Samu Wraith says, I see what you're doing, Scorp LOL. Trying to play Star Trek online. Radiation. Doing the worst I ever can at playing a game and people and everything. Samu Wraith says, to the link gasm, haha. -ha. Link gasm. That's right. He, he orgasms at every damn. I'm doing my best and worst way of living. <laughs> Ball Tim Raider, a Ball Tim Raider. <sighs> Shipyard troop transports are beginning their run to the planet. <laughs> Got Elvis's suspicious minds in my head, and I can't get it out because I watched that damn Elvis movie, and now I can't stop watching Elvis shit. Your troop transports are beginning their run to the planet.
God damn right. Damn right. Jesse. 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 Well, Walt did some shady shit, didn't he? Allowed Jesse's girlfriend to die. Just to prove a fucking point. Run to the planet. They are beginning to run to the planet. Oh no. They are beginning to run to the planet. Fire. Fire. Target shield. That's one thing I know. Blah blah blah. Blah 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 blah. Sam Wraith says, Yes, senior, lol. Yes, senior. Hello, senior. A herald dreadnought has it. How are we doing today? <laughs> I mock everybody. It's not that I'm racist or anything. I just like to mock shit. If it's a pile of shit sitting there on the floor, I'm type of a Sam bag. Wraith says, Ha 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 ha. attacking the It's like a Chihuahua that uh, is owned by uh, a customer comes in and uh, they bring the Chihuahua with them. His name is Carlos. He walks in there, he's all happy and stuff, and being a Chihuahua, he's naturally, he's, he's a Mexican dog, you know, he's, he's Spanish. A little Spanish guy. So when he comes in there, I say, hello, senor. You know, just picking around. Hey, senor Carlos, how are you? You know. He's a happy little dog, too. He, he likes to talk and mumble. You come up to the back of you and go, <laughs> you're like, oh, really? Okay, cool. He always wants some jerky, some beef jerky. His, um, his owner put, um, made him a little a black shirt and has the DG logo on the back of it. And we thought it'd be funny to make him a little name tag. So he has a little Dollar General name tag that they attach to in the middle of him there. And he loves it. He runs in there and goes up to all the people and showing off. It, like he's, It's almost like whenever he's standing there, he, he pushes his chest forward. Like, hey, look at me. Look what I got. Because he's always seeing us with these name tags. And now he has one. Dogs are smart. Samu Wraith says... Is it weird I hear every dog chihuahua I think will say Taco Bell LOL? Yep, I'm saying. <laughs> You'll get a Taco Bell. You know, you, you think you hear it. You'll get a Taco Bell. You'll get a Taco Bell. If you can't speak Spanish, just say the word taco, burrito, and enchilada. Chimichanga, even. Chimichanga? Jimmy Chunga. Deadpool likes Jimmy Chungas. <laughs> Sam Wraith says, There you go, Scorp. Haha. -ha. That's right. To say you don't know how to say anything in Spanish, well, something's wrong with you. Have you never had a burrito? <laughs> hmm. One of the things, like when I was in school, we did we had to take a foreign language class, and it happened to be Spanish, duh, because of the region we're in. And, you know, I'm sure you know, further up north to Canada, it would be you know, Sam French says, or quesadilla. Quesadilla. <laughs> um, so Spanish it was, and I'm kind of glad I remembered a few words from that because whenever um, People from Mexico do come and do like jobs and stuff like that, and are here. You know, they're legally here. 
they'll come in and they won't know the word for bathroom. So they'll go, hey, you le banu? And I'll say, see, that, and I'll point toward that di a direction. And they go, gracias, gracias, gracias. And they'll go in the bathroom. I'm thinking, dude, I helped them with that. I helped. I understood that they needed to go to the bathroom. The and I understand the damn word bathroom. Dude, dude anybody needs to use the restroom whenever I'm at work. Everyone's always oh. pleased to go in. I don't care if the manager says you can't. If I'm there, you're going in the bathroom. I know how much of a, you know, not being able to go. I, I mean, like, uh, like you know, um, <clears throat> went on a trip, camping trip one time, and a friend of mine uh, decided, hey, yeah, hey, let's, uh, we'll branch off, we'll go visit over here in uh, Hot Springs, says, Arkansas. Wonder how Mr. Scott would handle a Spanish person, lol. Right. And if he wasn't Scottish, he'd be Spanish. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Scott is a Spanish man. Um, so we went to Hot Springs, coming over from camping in the Ouachita Mountains. And they have it where you can go up a mountain up there and go up an elevator that's super tall or whatever. I, I didn't really give a shit about that. So I followed my friend up the, the you know the hiking trail to go up this mountain. and It was really steep and stuff in some areas. And I sat down because I was like, dude, I'm feeling like out of breath and stuff like that, you know. My, start, my head started feeling dizzy and shit, so I laid there, and, and then I passed out, and then I woke up, and I was like, oh, crap, you know. Then, um, needed to go, um, and went to, a, like, a little restroom building that was up there, washed my hands and all that, and then went back down. Well, you know, street level, you're fine, you're walking around, but then all of a sudden, I got hit with this, like, need to take a shit, you know, and, um... So it was like trying to find a place that would allow you to go in to use the bathroom without having to purchase something because I had no money. With me. And um, they're waiting for us. It was just something else, and and they go into like a place where they're saying, "Sorry, you can't use our restroom unless this, this, or that," you know. And hearing that from people, like if someone's in dire need to need to use a restroom for any kind of reason. And you deny them that, that's just cruel. So, no matter what, like, if I'm working at, at the store and someone comes in and they need to use this restroom, I'm like, dude, yes, it's over there. You know, I, I don't hesitate. I tell them, yeah. Even whenever um, they would have this event called Main to Main, it happens around the area that I'm at. It's more south of us now. It used to be like when I was at the other store, it'd be right there. But uh, it's where. There's like a flea market from Main Street of um, one part of uh, a city or town or whatever. And it would go up the whole highway until like the in, in, in up into the next state kind of thing. And it's nothing but people with their shit out in their yard and people pulling off to the Sam side, says, you know. Mr. Snot Aquero Taco Bell, LOL. Aquero Taco Bell. Mr. Snot Aquero Taco Bell. Hello, Antonio Banderas. Um, <clears throat> but, you know, people would just be wandering around, like, aimlessly lost, doing this little flea market thing down the main highway, and it was just, and people would come in and go, hey, do you have a restroom? And my manager would always tell everybody that the restroom was messed up or not working or whatever like that, and they would look at me, and, I'm, and I would, like, just kind of lower my head down, and they knew that, you know, she was bullshitting. So they'd wait till she went off, and I'd say, here's the key. You know, like that, you know. But then again, like, you let people in, they'll tear that shit up. I can smell their fear. That's not their fear. Says, back. You must be close. Hey, Murdoch's welcome back. Murdoch says, the cable company was doing maintenance WTF. <laughs> <laughs> they always says, pick the wrong damn shut time. Me down. <sighs> Companies always pick the wrong damn time to do shit, don't they? <laughs> Gotta love it.
Not the one dude that popped in here. Murdoch says, I tried playing Supreme Commander offline, but it was glitchy. Supreme Commander offline. Oh, hell. Command Camp Mander? Supreme Camp Mander? Gary, Gary the Klingon, piece of a shit he is. It's like getting home the other day and uh, all the clocks in the house are flashing and bullshit like that. And I'm like, what the hell happened, you know? An electric company running new lines, so they decided, hell, we'll just cut this one off and turn it back on in a minute. Why not just go, hey, we're about to turn off the power if you got anything plugged in, blah, 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 you know? Nope, they don't do that. <laughs> like saying, screw you guys, I'm going home. Joining a random. Rare. How close is he on that random thing? I have completely just ignored it. And apparently I'm not going to see it right now. If it's one there are thing... Two more transwarp conduits in this. Yeah, okay. Then. Good for them. Sixty six, so this would be sixty seven. Mm -hmm. Your defensive capabilities are unable to withstand us. Lower your shields and await assimilation. Oh, yeah, someone reaches out and uses a slingshot to throw an egg at the Borg ship while they're doing a standoff. Jal Hadar. It's not even a Jim Hadar. Jalhar. Fire. Gary. Samu Wraith says, like the Borg put you on a waiting list for assimilation and expect you to stand there. Yep, good plan. <laughs> We're the Borg. Could you please wait a minute while we uh, get everything ready? Because uh, it seems like uh, 12 of 35 was, like, uh, not ready or something. And 2 of 17, get back in formation. Damn it, man. We practice this shit every damn day. No, you are resistance is futile. Is futile. You come from under that rock, or from under it? Oh, from behind it? Samu Wraith says. Or put you like on the back of a checkout register and tell you, sir, please be patient. We will process when we are ready, sir. Sir, 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 can you please shut the hell up, sir? <laughs> oh, man. The customer service is fun. If they're really irate and acting impatient, I like to slow things down a bit to make it last a little longer. To really bring out that frustration. Because I enjoy getting yelled at. <laughs> Samu Wraith says, What would happen if Borg were running a grocery store? Haha. -ha. There wouldn't be nobody complaining, that's for damn sure. It's like, Isn't that Sally? Yeah, that's Sally. She was, she, uh, was supposed to come over here the other day and buy some groceries. What ever happened to her? No, she's working here? That can't be right. Sally, Sally, what are you doing here, Sally? We are Sally of Borg. <laughs> oh, no, this can't be. This can't be. I'm going to have to hire manager. She can't work here. Excuse me, are you the manager? I am Stephen of Borg. You know. 
the acting manager of this store. My my friend over there can't work here. No, no, she can't work here. Fast forward two hours later, then all of a sudden she's the one working there too now. Because <laughs> you can play. You get you get assimilated if you complain. Lord That's what it is. Lower your shit. <laughs> Lower your shit and prepare to be boarded, bitch. Samu Wraith says, we will deal with your complaint momentarily. Please wait while we process your complaint. And then all of a sudden nanites come out of their hand. The collective will not fall here. Meanwhile, in another galaxy far, far away... Luke! Luke, where the fuck are you, Luke? Luke! Damn, it's Uncle Ben. <laughs> it's Uncle Jedediah. He's looking for me. He wants to whip me again with that stick. Sam Wraith says, so would it be our eyes easy of board then? Aha! You put an E in there. Alan. I have it spelled different than Alien. It's Alan. Alan! Alan! Okay, remove an L. Alan. Al. An. We're picking up some strange freaks. Something is decloaking. We know the right. <coughs> nice day today. I think I might say. Alan! Well, time forward, your Alan! 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 Yeah, I don't think you need me, you know. Yeah. Alan! 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 Al! Alan! 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 Oh, so that's not Alan. It's Steve, no, it's Steve. Steve! 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 Oh, no, that's not Steve. Sam Wraith says, maybe Alan, it's Alan, Steve. Alan, 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 Alan! Did someone just say my name? Hey, 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 <laughs> you say Alan. <laughs> Did someone just say my name? <laughs> oh, man, I, I watched, when did that come on? It was a BBC program, Talking Animals. Uh, like a wild, wild side or whatever, and uh, of course they go by series and not seasons over there. So series one, episode one is what that comes off of. Talking animals. Cause there's one where it's like this uh, this mother walrus is laying there. And uh, two out of the three walrus children or whatever, like, next to her. and They're, like, saying, I know I'm Wolverine. I'm Wolverine. No, I'm Wolverine. I'm Sabretooth. I'm Wolverine. And she, like, smacks him on the back of the head. She goes, shove it. You know I'm walking nights. <laughs> uh, it makes me laugh every time I watch that. One day in 19. <laughs> <coughs> so 
just wanted to listen to the multi part of it. Is that too bad? Samu Wraith says, take a look, it's in a book, it's Gary's Rainbow. Gary's Rainbow. Gary's Rainboner. This is Rainboner. Take a look, he's taking a dump. In his own ass. <laughs> that one scene in that movie, uh, everywhere, everything, all at once. Um, or everything, everywhere, all at once. I think that's, it's just confusing. But whenever that one guy is uh, holding his legs out, and he's Samu like, Wraith says, <laughs> IT is I Gary the Klingon your host this fine evening for the Rainbow. Rainbow Network! <laughs> but he's got his legs spread open, you know, he's got his pants off and all that stuff. And he's trying to sit his ass on top of this little, like, egg thing to give him the super ability of Kung Fu. And I was like, oh my god, this movie's insane. Take a look, it's in a book. Reading Rainbow. I can't do a damn thing. No confidence. Bunch of shit having to deal with all the time. Scooby Doo, where the fuck are you? Do 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 do. A little less compensation, a little more action. All this constipation and satisfying me. Okay, we're just gonna have to wait for Gary to boost up his star base. And then one day, 19 hours, 20 minutes, and 28 seconds. Gary the Klingon. Proud warrior of no house at all. Doodle doo baggins. Take a look, 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 a look. Sinna book. Oh, I have a blue piss ant without shoes. And I'll be doing half right. I'll pee out of sight. When I watch that uh, 68 Elvis special on YouTube, someone has the full thing on there. It's almost like watching a robot Elvis perform. Like, so surreal to where it, it doesn't seem like he's a real person. Versus, like, what you see of his live stage performances and stuff. But it, it's like, you know, after watching an Elvis movie and seeing, like, kind of... it's It was uh, a bit, you know, more drama added to the situation, but how stressed he was just doing that, like, not being able to do what he wanted completely. But, um... Samu Wraith says, I almost got talked into going to see that Elvis movie. Pelvis, Elvis, Elvis, Elvis. Well, if you know anything about Elvis, it's, that's, it's what happened in there. It's just, it's told from the perspective of, uh, that Colonel guy or whatever, played by Tom Hanks. He tells the story of his version of like what happened to Elvis or or Elvis in general, like from his side of things, and they they throw a lot of uh, you know there's a lot of truth in in a lot of the scenes, and then there's also a little bit they threw in for more like a you know performance thing to get the viewer thinking, so you don't like take the whole movie as fact. It's like maybe 75 to 85 percent factual and the rest is kind of like scripted made up or whatever to enhance scenes and stuff 
But it's it's pretty cool. I mean, I could see why people liked uh, Elvis watching that movie. I don't know why Elvis was watching it. No, I'm kidding. Uh, um, up here, it'd be in the way. Let's go over here and sit down at this table. Yeah, there we go. Uh, we're out of the way now. I'm just sitting here. Yeah, we're just sitting here. <laughs> But it uh, got a lot of people like watching his stuff again, you know, listening to his music again. I think that's pretty good. And Priscilla was uh, a key factor in a lot of Elvis's stuff. I highly doubt that he only has one damn kid, though. That's for damn sure. And the illegitimate children out there everywhere. My my dad's friend. Uh, his mom always told him that he was Elvis's kid. Because back when they had that Louisiana hayride, she would attend. And then she talked about meeting up with him, you know. Then nine Murdoch months later. Says Elvis was a tard. And, uh, dude, like, had the same lip look and nose and forehead eyes and stuff you know like Elvis play the guitar and sing and all that sounds just like him and not even try that's what was odd so there's like a bunch of illegitimate children out there you gotta, you gotta Murdoch says that, shit. that movies isn't really out yet to stream for rental they charging twenty dollars so I lol wait you can uh, watch it on YouTube <laughs> Dude, why not let me look at that? She had fought her. Shade to Fouquet. There we go. Murdoch says, So can I kill Voth at the Dyson Sphere Battle Zone? Yes. That's the best place to kill Voth. Sitting at a table doing nothing because nothing can happen in this game. Wuhan. 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 Man, the uh, integrity of these streams has gotten piss poor, hasn't it? It's gotten worse. <laughs> I totally suck. Evil Holly, Holly Hawks. Why are people greedy as F? <laughs> I said, you answered your question. People are greedy because they are people. That's right. I 
watched uh, another video, you know, get to looking up junk or whatever on YouTube, and I'm reminded of the, the moon stuff. <clears throat> About uh, recently, it's been found. I don't know how they find this shit. If no one's looking on the moon, how the hell they know, right? But uh, that one of their there's like a cavern or whatever on the moon that's 63 degrees. And could possibly be like warmer on the inside. And it's like prompted uh, NASA to like think about making moon bases or some shit in it. Because all they would have to worry about is just, uh, you know, um, oxygen atmosphere or something. But then they looked like, like back at a lot of stuff, you know, you see about the moon. And there are points where the moon has had temporary atmospheres in parts of the craters and things. Where it's not, I don't know if it would be breathable for us, but it's an atmosphere. It's got like, you know, there's like a volcanic activity type shit happening on the moon too. That means it's got a, a warm core, right? Then you hear about the one about the moon being like hollow. Being like, because it resonated whenever something hit it. Murdoch says, yet I saw that. So... And then they're like, all the people talking about, oh, it's the lizard people that live in the moon. There's somebody that in the game Said everyone's full of shit for having over a million energy credits because it's impossible. <laughs> um, you know, a lot of people think that the moon's been placed here by aliens to keep the environment stable or the planet stable enough for life to grow and all that. <clears throat> I'm going to end the stream. There's no reason to keep it up. Okay. Still gonna figure out why the hell that ain't working down there. It still isn't working. What the fuck? It's, it's weird. Oh, let me check that Zen real quick. Still sitting there. Nothing happening. Okie dokie. Well, I thank everybody for popping in tonight. Uh, whatever. Sorry for if I ticked anybody off. Sorry if I... Murdoch says, right. Like, under... Underappreciated anyone, or... Didn't think that their information into this was important or not. It was. I just have a lot of thinking going on. 
But yeah, who knows? What if I don't come on tomorrow night? Will anybody be upset? Or even like for the rest of the month or <laughs> the rest of the year? Um, yeah. Uh, the stream's getting kind of too boring, isn't it? It's getting too repetitive. A little too, yeah. More important things out there than this. There's like like sleeping, sleeping twelve Murdoch hours says, a day. I might not know. You know, like sleeping would be good. What if I just stop playing Star Trek? Would that be good? Would that be a good idea? Thoughts on the... something changed in this game though. I don't know why I can't use Star Trek window to put Star Trek on here anymore. What if I did that? Done. Did this? Is this what changed it? No. What about that? Change it. That don't change it either. I hate to use game capture because how the hell does it know if it's a game or not? <sighs> Did that change somehow? Murdoch says, I like the stream. Ah, see, that didn't do a thing either. What happened? Murdoch to this says, thing? makes playing still more fun. Yeah, but what if it holds people back from doing more important things? You know, what if I'm holding people back? Murdoch says, but I take breaks from stow sometimes. Sometimes? You'll take breaks sometimes. <laughs> Murdoch says, maybe you're holding yourself back. That's right. I need to get out there and uh, murder the world or something. Fulfill my destiny. <laughs> Of doing nothing for the rest of the time. Uh, this person's talking about. I ain't going to save it in the left. That's what I heard. This person, evil Holly. Keeps talking about uh, all this hell stuff. Nice. Nice. Get off of there, you fucking bastard. Do, 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 do. Should I get philosophical? Go real deep. Murdoch says, I have to do a Lucari TFO one ago. Lucari? No. I really need to go just lay down and contemplate nothing. <laughs> if so, sure, I'll go, yeah. Um, 
Cells exist, they belong to something else. They aren't ours. Okay, I'm gonna close it down. I don't feel like doing anything. Ah, oh, there you are. Okay, yeah. As Gary, sure. Why is he on the floor? Hell. What the hell is he doing? How did he get down there like that? Murdoch says, LOL WTF. Hmm. <laughs> Murdoch says, you be trolling. Right.
Oh, damn it. Just when it was getting good. <laughs> the time for battle is almost here. Does it... The Zunkatsu and the Pudding need to go together and find the Pudding. I think uh, I've figured out me. I'm a sociopath. And I like it. <laughs> Your teammate has captured a bomb. Protect them. Plama Shizzle. Murdoch says, This guy is weak, I will start working on him again. Korik. I think Murdoch says um, change the build from beam overload to surgical strikes since it's an intel ship. You've got that it's the the, the knife edge ship, right? That's that's what you've got. I think I think Riz wants that ship. Cuz in his last stream he was talking about uh wanting it whenever he was uh whatever that uh that TFO is uh cuz if we're not talking we're if we're not fighting we're talking or Murdoch some shit. says, oh, okay." Yeah, like, uh, so I think he wants that one because it's in the cinematic scene where he, like, cuts that ship in half. Yeah. Because Riz was talking about it. It's, uh, the Discovery one or whatever where... Murdoch says, yup, it has a charge ability. Because if we're not fighting, says, we're talking. a ram ability. Yeah, a ram ability. How did you get that one? Your teammate has captured a bomb. Let's capture the bomb. Murdoch says it's in a mud's bundle. Ah. Lee, go over there, Lee. Lee, Lee, dude, they're like bombing the base that we're supposed to be protecting. And yeah, I just I don't know why I should know that. Murdoch says, so now I know this ship needs some work, so that's good. Knowing is half the battle. GI Joe, it's one of the things I should include for the sounds if I even care to anymore. Do 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 do. Yo, Joe. Cool, have them come over here and use them on this base. If I should stay, I would only be in your way.
Life is like a box of chocolates. You never know what you're gonna get. Bum, bum. You're gonna get uh, a bunch of misery. That's for damn sure. You're gonna you're gonna think you're living like the best thing in the world. But no, you're not. You're not. You're not. You're not. It's just an illusion. It's just a fake thing. It's a facade. I'm protecting them by trying to kill all the enemies at the bases. Our four shields failing. Come on, Overload. Come on, Beam Overload. Come on, Beam Overload. Okay, no, 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 no Beam Overload for you. How you like that, Klingon base? Your teammate has captured a bomb. Protect them. Protect the bomb. Okay. Okay. Teammates captured a bomb. Where are they at then? Ah, there you are. Only one Zikati base left. Ah, they're sending a dreadnought to stop us. There's a dreadnought on an attack vector. Destroy it. Bananas. Is that the one that's supposed to be the dreadnought? <coughs> Gary does not fear this dreadnought. Worf's brother has it bad for Zinkethi. I'm all about that shit. That was alright. Good. I get the good, I get the good. Oh. All right. Closing her down. Murdoch says, I'm getting more endeavors done these days. Nice. Well, in, in, in doing a lot more endeavors, you unlock more perks, you know, from each one you cash in and get uh, more abilities and, you know, more boom boom. More boom boom, Captain. What the hell is up with this shit? I don't like it when things change for no reason. It pisses me off. <clears throat> yeah. All right, dude. I'm going to call it Pickles. Get some rest, rest some get.
Sleep, everybody sleep. Everybody go to sleep right now. I wish I could go to sleep right now. I could lay there, but I won't sleep. Murdoch says, sounds good. Night. Night. Bye.